So good morning, uh, dear participants and uh, users of uh, Bowen Geo Portal. A warm welcome uh, to all of you uh, joining us uh, for this uh, three-day webinar to the YouTube uh, EduSat channel of uh, ISRO IRS. Um, I welcome you all uh, for this uh, day two uh, session where we will be covering uh, technical talks related to the data download and uh, some uh, mobile applications and also some case studies uh, with respect to the uh, water resources and also the governance related applications. Uh, so I hope uh, you're all are good and uh, doing well. So yesterday we had uh, an overview of the Buon Geo portal, its uh, features and uh, what all the uh, what all is possible on that uh, geo portal platform so we you could uh, know about that one so today we'll uh, try to give you some additional uh, information about uh, how to download the data sets what kind of uh, applications can be hosted uh, on that uh, bowen geo platform and what are the various thematic services that we are uh, providing so all these uh, things in a nutshell you will be getting to know so i hope uh, those who are uh, registered for this training are uh, doing their uh, quiz also. So kindly uh, uh, attempt your quiz. So we had a good uh, response to the uh, day one quiz. So I hope it will continue with the day two also. So the quiz will be posted at uh, uh, by 3 p.m. today. And you have uh, up to uh, midnight to attempt that one and submit the your uh, responses. So without uh, further delay, Okay. Uh, I once again welcome you all for this uh, day two session and uh, keep your uh, questions posted in the chat so that I can uh, take it to the respective speakers. Um, fine then, so we'll uh, begin our uh, first uh, talk on the uh, Bowen satellite image layers, free data download uh, through NOIDA, Bowen NOIDA portal. So Mr. Rama Rao uh, is here. He is working in the Bowen uh, Geo portal uh, web services area. Uh, Mr. Ramada, welcome to this uh, talk. Welcome to this webinar. And it's uh, over to you for your uh, presentation. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, one second, I'll share my presentation. Yeah, sure. Sir, are you getting this uh, presentation, sir? Yes. Yeah, then we'll proceed further. Uh, good morning, all. This is uh, Ramara working for Bound Content Generation in uh, NRC. Basically, we process all the satellite data that is uh, hosted on Bound for both uh, visualization and downloads. Uh, as, uh, so, as it was told earlier, uh, yesterday we have got all the overview about all everything about Bound. Now we will see specifically about the satellite data and the free data downloads. Uh, this is the outline of the presentation. Uh, we'll start with uh, what is the satellite data that is available on Bower. And then uh, there are different uh, visualization options. Then we'll go through that one. And then we'll see later, we'll see the uh, read data download part. Uh, this is the overview of all the satellite data that is available on Bower. Uh, currently, the policy allows us to host only up to one meter data. Even though we have some meter data, what we'll do is we'll resample the data to one meter and then only update the data for visualization on Bowen. At the course resolution, we have 50 meter AFC data. Uh, from the list, you can uh, figure out. Um, for 50 meters, we have different sensors and satellites uh, which are set one and two. Uh, from 50 to one meter, these are the sources from where we'll get the data. Among all these data sets, only 24 meter and 50 meter are only given for free data downloads. Maybe in future, if the policy allows, uh, uh, you will also get a 5 meter data. Uh, this 2.5 and the 1 meter data are uh, only for visualization. And if you see the level of processing what we carry out uh, before hosting the data on Bowen. For all the data that is given for visualization, we will uh, we'll improve the geometry uh, so that there are, uh, if there are any internal distortions, they get removed. We will also improve the positional accuracy. Then for doing a proper visualization, uh, we will also improve the, enhance the radiometry. For all the 
data that is given for visualization, we will only improve the geometry, that is we will do the other rectification and improve the positional accuracy. We will not modify the radiometry, that is the original uh, pixel values are retained, so that uh, it can be used for any uh, scientific applications also. Okay, now at the highest resolution, uh, what we have is uh, one meter data. For this, uh, we have different uh, satellites, Carter Sat 2 and 3 satellites, and we also have uh, some other uh, outside data also. We'll process all this uh, data for whole India. When I say one meter layer, it is for whole India. Now, unlike any other commercial packages, the way they will upload only hotspots, we will uh, update the whole Indian data in each layer. For this one meter, we have three such layers, and uh, these are the time periods uh, when the data was acquired. We have one layer of 2018, we have one layer of 2017, and the uh, first initial layer was of uh, 2012 to 2016. Here, the important thing, a uh, special th uh, thing about this one meter data is this uh, entire data is processed using highly accurate GCPL uh, uh, ground control points, survey points, and we, we have achieved an accuracy of better than 5 meter. Anywhere in India, if you go, uh, accuracy is of better than 5 meter. And here the snap shows uh, the full Indian coverage of uh, one meter data and one uh, sample image of our high-tech city in Hyderabad is also shown here. This is regarding one meter data. And these are the few sample data sets of uh, one meter data. Next we have is uh, 2.5 meters. Here, here uh, we get a pan chromatic data from Carter set one and then we get a five meter data from resource set one and two. We'll combine these two data sets and we'll generate a 2.5 meter color image. Here also, full India for full India, we have two layers of this 2.5 meter. And the time period of periods for this 2.5 meter data is one is of 2006 to 9, and the latest is of 2016. Since there is no further equation from this quarter set one, we have we are not able to update any 2.5 meter uh, after 2016. Next, what we have is this uh, five meter data. For five meter, we have multiple satellites, this is a satellite two under two A. Uh, combining these two satellite data, uh, we'll update uh, this five meter data. And for five meter, we have three layers. Starting from 2000, 2002, 2019, these are the three layers of this five meter data sets. Um, Later, uh, next to what we have is uh, of uh, 25 meter data. This 25 meter data is acquired using research at 1 and 2, 2A, using list 3 sensor. Since uh, this is at a uh, coarse resolution, we have uh, repeated coverage of whole India. For that reason, we are able to update uh, more frequently. Compared to 1 meter, we, uh, we get uh, more number of uh, equations of this list 3. So we, have, we are uh, updating uh, 3 layers per year. That is if you... Uh, that is for three seasons, Rabi, Karif, and Jayad. All the three seasons uh, um, we update each year. At the course resolution, what we have is this 50 meter data. This 50 meter data is also acquired using the search at 1, 2, and 2A satellites. This AWIPS uh, data we have on Indian full Indian coverage every five, year, five days. So that uh, we are updating uh, per each month, we are updating one layer. Excluding the three months of rainy season, we are updating around eight to nine layers. Uh, on Bowen from 2016 onwards. This is the entire list of uh, data that is available on Bowen. Okay, this is uh, about all, uh, this is all about the uh, resolutions available on Bowen. Next, what we, we see is how to access this entire data using Bowen visualization tool. For accessing all the satellite data, you need to visit this uh, Bowen uh, 2D application and the homepage for Bowen is bowen.nrc.gov.in. Once you visit the homepage, there is an option for Bowen 2D. If you click on that one, here this is the homepage for Bowen 2D application. Initially, by default, you will be shown this map option. If we switch to the satellite option, this satellite uh, data is uh, shown here. At the full Indian uh, scale, the data what you are seeing is this AWIPS mosaic. For, from this, uh, for navigating, there are multiple options. If you know the place uh, lat long, you can key in the lat long in the search box. If you know the place name, uh, that also you can uh, start keying. Uh, uh, places will uh, start appearing uh, from the database. Or else you can simply use this zoom bar you can, uh, for uh, reaching your place of interest. 
the uh, one such place where i have visited is this is hyderabad airport uh, this is the data showing 1 meter data at the highest resolution if you want to see the metadata for this there is one calendar icon given on the top of this uh, data if you click on that one the calendar appears here uh, here the data that you are visualizing is this of 20th december 2017 this is the data that is shown by default similarly we also got a list of all the available data for the same area the by default it was showing 2017 now i have switched it to 2018 we can uh, see the changes similarly for the same area we also have a very old data uh, of this is this is of to the 1979 same area in 1979 like this once you visit the place of interest you can change the date of pass of this satellite data here you will get all the list of available layers for that area this is one way of uh, Accessing the satellite data. Here in this default scheme, if you keep on zooming, visit this more icon and select the data data of your interest here i have selected a 2.5 meter data of 2016 here in this case even at the course resolution the data that is shown is of 2.5 meter only it will not take you to a this is the advantage uh, here at the highest level also you will see only 2.5 meter data Similarly, I have selected 2.5 meter data of uh, 2009 and 10. Uh, this is the coverage uh, for that particular period of 2.5 meter. This is for uh, 5 meter data of 2017. This way, you can select the resolution or uh, period or date of your interest. See, here, I have selected uh, 24 meter uh, list 3 data of 2008. You can see the changes. Same area in uh, 2021. For AVIFS starting 2022, uh, we are updating uh, one meter uh, each month. We are updating one layer. 2022 January of uh, this is of Nagarjun Sagar, February, March. Uh, right now, if you visit, uh, maybe April, May also might be updated in Bhavan. These are the snaps from our previous presentation. Like this, uh, you can uh, visualize the, all the satellite data ranging from 50 to 1 meter. Okay, you have selected the data of your interest. Uh, then what you can do, there are some tools given for you. Uh, if you visit this uh, tools, there are some options. If you have your existing uh, data geocoded image, you can uh, upload that image and you can compare that against the Bowen imagery. Uh, there are some uh, draw tools given. If you want to quickly digitize, you can use this. Uh, Draw tool, you can digitize the on the data on the bone 2D itself. Uh, here I have selected polygon, it will also show you the area. Similarly, you have also point and line options. After digitizing, you can download this uh, as a shape file for uh, further use. The, uh, apart from this uh, periodic updation, we also do some project specific uh, satellite data updation. One such uh, example is this AIBP. For uh, irrigation project monitoring, uh, we update this satellite data periodically. And uh, another project is this IWMP watershed uh, management project. Uh, here, the data is not shown publicly, only through specific logins. So, this data is uh, shown. Other than this, uh, the earlier 50 to 1 meter data, it is uh, completely uh, visualized on Bhuvan. Okay, this is uh, all about the satellite data. Now, we will see about the free data downloads. For uh, downloading the data, you need to visit this open data archive from above on homepage. If you click on that, uh, you will land here. 
for downloading you need to have one login with bhuvan if you have a login you can simply login or if you don't have you create one account with bhuvan this registration is very simple uh, you can try it out all this uh, free data downloads we have grouped them into three categories one is of one is direct satellite data we have to search at 1 to and hyperspectral uh, 24 meter 50 meter and one hyperspectral image from ims1 all these are direct satellite data after processing we will give the data for free download second category is theme based products uh, here the themes are land vegetation land and terrain um, and the third category of products are the outputs from different projects carried out by nrsc this is the major project is uh, of nices all the products generated under nices are given as a free download through bowen this is the first category of uh, free data as i told you earlier avips we are giving uh, free data uh, as a download uh, the data is at 50 meters after all the geometric corrections what we do is we will cut the images into tiles for your understanding and easy identification of places we are cutting the tiles using survey of india osm convention the tile size here is one degree by one degree like this for in whole india you will get around 350 tiles um, and one such uh, tile here shown is 43 gn this is uh, one degree by one degree says and here the rate of process is also given uh, from after AFs we have list three satellite data list here the tile size is 15 minutes by 15 minutes same survey of india open series map uh, format since the tile size is 15 minutes you will get around 5000 tiles to cover full india while downloading here there are multiple options given for you select the tiles one is if you know the latlands boundary you can uh, give the boundary if you know the map sheet number directly you can give that or else interactively you can also select the tiles here along with the satellite data there are some technical documents are also given uh, how the data is processed and everything if you want to know in detail about the processing and uh, the specifications you can download these pdfs and uh, have a look at it this is the tiles for, uh, these are the tiles for uh, list three the ties at uh, 24 meter tile size is 15 minutes and then this is the sample tile see as i told you uh avix and list we are updating um, uh, multiple uh, layers uh, each year here i have selected one uh, particular tile e44n if you see the list uh, starting from 2008 to 2016 uh, you will also have 2019 if you scroll down same tile you have multiple options if it is avix uh, you will be having a more uh, frequent data like this uh, once you select the data uh, tile you can uh, download the data of your interest data pass of your interest see these are the area selection options and this is the dates for a single tile along with the satellite data we'll also provide you some metadata if you want to have a quick look uh, there is a option for thumbnail if you click this the jpeg is shown without downloading the data the actual data is downloaded using this download option uh, apart from this direct satellite data uh, we also have a dem generated using the stereo equation of a cartosat one satellite uh, along with india you will also have surrounding uh, countries this entire data is, is uh, given uh, as a free download uh, internally we have data dems up to five meter but the free data is uh, the, uh, given is of 30 meter posting cut to dem of 30 meter here also the tile size is uh, one degree by one degree like this uh, from this you can download the cut to dem uh, one more direct satellite data that is given is uh, this hyperspectral imagery from uh, ims1 uh, this also is given uh, as a free download the second Second category of products are this thematic products. These are the derived products uh, from the satellite data. Uh, currently, we are giving uh, this NDVI data, local both local and global coverage at different resolutions. For all these uh, thematic uh, theme-based products, there is a particular frequency with which we update the data on Bhuvan. Uh, here, the options are given for uh, selecting the dates of your interest. Here, uh, the tools are also given to see uh, the changes using uh, this swipe tool this one uh, you try once 
these are the theme based products ndva yellow both the local and uh, global coverage using uh, generated using OCM data the third category of products are this uh, uh, products generated for this nicest product a total of uh, 69 products are generated using uh, under this uh, nicest program all these are categorized into four different groups atmospheric uh, climate cryospheric ocean and terrestrial all the 69 products are given through one for free download under this atmospheric we what we have have is cloud fraction then updated every 30 minutes using the insert 3d data under this cryospheric products we have snow melt antarctica study projects products under the ocean these are the different products that are given for free downloads ocean heat content and mean temperature under terrestrial water body fraction is generated for all the water bodies using the avif's user set one data and it is given as a free download see if you visit this nice uh, tool then the details are given here what is the frequency of uh, data updation and technical documents about how the data is processed and everything is also given for your reference this is the entire list of uh, all section and products generated under nicest and uh, available on bovan if you have any difficulty in uh, finding the product of uh, your interest what you can do is you can simply visit this bovan store here the total list of uh, everything available on bovan is listed out here on uh, clicking any of your uh, interested product it will take you to that uh, page this is all about uh, pre data downloads if you have any queries so maybe you can take it up now thank you Ram, Ram, do you do you have have any demonstration i mean demonstration to be made no uh, no sir only presentation sir So this is only presentation. Huh? I mean, who will do the demo? Demo, no? demo is uh, uh, maybe one second, sir. So the demo is not demo, no? Is it next? Ah, uh, demo, no idea, sir. If we have time, maybe I can show image processing part. There, I was uh, giving that also, but uh, now. Yeah. Okay. Now we'll see uh, how to access this uh, satellite data. Sir, are you getting the screen, sir? Yes, Ramaragar. Yes, it is. Yes, we are getting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
okay as i told you this is the home page for rabavan uh, for visualizing all the satellite data you need to visit this rabavan 2d this is how it appears this is our home page now by default uh, you will be shown this map view here i'm changing this to satellite data see this is uh, at full india level you are seeing uh, avix data i am zooming uh, using this just by using mouse i am zooming to one particular location see now the data what you are seeing is of uh, list 3 like this uh, by zooming uh, the data gets changed to 1 meter at the highest resolution so uh, selected uh, this uh, either about the using set is using this uh, more icon here what i'll do is i will select 2.5 meter satellite data see now the same area is uh, of uh, 2.5 meter data from 2016 date now you see is loading the 2.5 meter data now you see same area from 2016 2.5 meter like this uh, at any zoom level what you get is 2.5 meter data only this is a coverage uh, entire coverage like this you can uh, select particular resolution or uh, year of pass here I am selecting 5 meter data of Tool spot you can uh, check it out. Tools uh, draw tool and uh, measure tool you can try later. Now we will see this noida part. 
from the home page you click this open data archive this is the home page for uh, all the satellite data downloads for downloading the data you need to have login here what i will do is i will select uh, on list 3 tile i have selected uh, list 3 data i will select this interactive drawing you click this start See, now if you click next this is the entire list of uh, all the tiles under this polygon from here you can select what is the tile uh, you require and for each tile you have multiple uh, data pass options but if you click this metadata this is my metadata of the satellite is given for quickly viewing this uh, tile thumbnail option is given this is the jpeg image this is how the data looks if you download for downloading you need to click this download option here i have not logged in so it is asking me to log in this is how to download this uh, list 3 uh, here the current limitation uh, is uh, you can download only 20 tiles uh, per day if you have more to download what you can do is uh, you can uh, select the remaining tiles and save to backlog like this you can save to backlog tomorrow if you log in uh, you will you don't need to set the tiles again Oh. theme land terrain land vegetation if you visit uh, here the ndv products are given this is for a global coverage using our sim data and this is a local coverage for indian region oh, you can select the ndv for your interest here it is asking me to log in okay this is how the end of product for this period looks like under theme we have a cartoon demo land terrain cartoon demo so you have different uh, versions uh, some documents are given uh, you can find uh, at the latest is this cartoon uh, shot cartoon demo version 3 along with india surrounding uh, countries demo is also given for downloads here also tile selection mechanism is same as earlier tile size is one degree and the dump posting is of 30 meter the third category of products are the nicest products these are the categories different categories there are four categories see this like this you can select the, all the products and download Oh, this is all about uh, Ida part. Sir Harish, this much only, sir. Let's take a room. Uh, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. I'm a
or you can continue further sir uh-huh. Yeah, sure. But before that, I think uh, we have uh, two questions here. Probably you can uh, answer them. Uh, is list four data available for download? Ah, uh, sir. Currently, list four data is not uh, available for download. Ah, uh, only twenty four meter and fifty meter. List three and AVFs are only are only given for downloads. Maybe in the new policy, if five meter is allowed, you may get. Uh, but right now, it is not given, sir. and there is a question on like uh, we are also um, hosting the neighborhood countries uh, dem data that is a terrain data so is yeah. there any objection uh, do we have any objection for, i mean raised by the countries uh, when we um, share, i mean put their uh, terrain data also in our portal ah uh, sir uh, that I mean, policy is it okay part is what is asking uh, yeah yeah that policy part i am not aware sir maybe leslie or uh, some senior uh, colleague can take it up sir basically no such such uh, yeah, please let's continue uh, basically no such, uh, issues will be raised because other countries also will publish such data on their uh, on their portal so uh, I don't think any such restrictions are there and uh, like what is the uh, uh, grid size we are giving for that uh, terrain so that meters is 30 meter 30 meter 30 meters for the entire uh, i mean neighboring countries also yes sir yes sir everything in 30 meter so thank you uh, ramarao for your uh, uh, talk on this uh, the data downloads uh, bhuvan noida portal and also you have shown like how to access the data sets and download them for uh, by the users so we thank you for your uh, talk and your valuable time here so moving on to the next uh, uh, technical talk that is on the bhuvan mobile applications and demo so this will be done by uh, mr leslie he is also from uh, bhuvan geo uh, portal web service area so leslie sir you are there Ah uh, yes, I'm there. Yeah, so it's over to you. You can uh, kindly share your PPT and uh, can give your talk. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Arish. Uh, Harish, kindly confirm whether I could you could see my screen. Yeah, it is visible. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'll be taking you through uh, some of the features which we have, and as well as the different types of mobile applications which we have published uh, from Bhuvan. Uh, it deals about uh, basically geospatial field data. collection and uh, the analysis which we do as well as uh, some decision making solutions we have on a mobile that uh, i will uh, get you through some of the things uh, to start with uh, we have uh, developed about uh, you know, 109 plus applications and uh, currently there are about uh, 32 applications are active and operational rest of them have completed their life and uh, it has served uh, the requirement of the uh, government basically uh, we deal with mostly with the government uh, related activities uh, where the requirement comes from different government departments and that uh, for that we develop and then we float these applications um, on a on basically crowd sourced or controlled crowd source and this uh, the data capturing happens with the help of ministry their own staff and then um, it gets uploaded and we do 
uh, some analysis and help them in understanding what is happening on the ground. This is basically, uh, these apps are basically towards that. Uh, if you see here, uh, there are about 100 million geotags we have already received and we have about um, 2.5 lakh uh, uh, users. We have active users and then um, we do uh, regularly interact with different minutes, ministries and government departments and understand their requirement. We design solutions and then uh, we float them on one geo platform and then uh, people on ground or field will use these applications and then um, it comes uh, to the one platform and then they can analyze, visualize or take some uh, decisions on this. And we do also take uh, capacity building uh, for the users, uh, user departments where uh, we conduct a TOT sort of a training of trainers, a sort of a uh, uh, training sessions we take and then uh, so that they uh, learn about the solution and how to work on that and then uh, implement on the field. Uh, I will take you through some of the slides where uh, how this entire thing has started. If you see any remote sensing solution, um, uh, if you have uh, satellite based uh, interpretation, it needs field verification. It all started from there, where uh, the interpreter, after interpreting, he will go on to the field, collect some information. And in the earlier days, if you see, they used to carry maps, hard copy maps, they used to carry forms, and uh, they interact with the local people, they get to know the value added information, and then they collect them in the form of form, they come to office, convert that into digital form, and then they start analyzing the information with respect to the interpretation which they carry out on the satellite data. All these used to happen, but uh, on the advent of these mobiles, actually it has overcome these limitations like uh, erroneous data entry, which which you which is generally used to have uh, some error of uh, input which goes through the uh, data entry time. Then uh, you, there is a huge time gap between the data collection and data analysis that actually uh, has reduced because of these mobile applications. Then um, it was actually the earlier uh, method was not suitable for any emergency management for any disaster where you have to take uh, near real time decisions that is not possible. So these mobile applications basically actually uh, overcome all these limitations. Um, this is the architecture where we uh, basically uh, adopted um, the mobile the there is a field component field activity component there is a data center component and uh, there is a client end component if you see the field component you have field officials who will visiting the field uh, location and they try to capture the information using the mobile where our mobile apps will be there in the mobile uh, these mobile apps will allow you to um, capture the information using the mobile and where we try to use uh, since these are basically geospatial based solutions where GPS is very actively used uh, which is there in the mobile uh, we uh, we capture them then we transfer these information through cellular network to the data center where at data center we have tools to receive the data, to organize the data, then we have tools to even visualize the information uh, based on the user query. So these are some of the, um, basically the technologies which I've used where you can see it in the bottom of the screen where uh, to the mobile development, what we do is we, we have adopted Apache Cordova APIs and HTML5, these are some of the um, technologies which we have adopted. And then in middleware, we used uh, Apache Web Server, PHP and XML and JSON, as well as uh, in the database level, we use PostgreSQL SQL and PostGIS. And at uh, a client side to visualize, we use open layer or map server, geo server. Geo server is basically publishing uh, tool to visualize the information which is captured using the 
mobile application and available in the data center. So these are uh, basically a simple overview of uh, uh, how we adopted this architecture in developing the mobile application. Uh, these are some of the features uh, you can find like uh, you have provision to capture the location separately. We do have geofencing concept in some mobile applications where monitoring based activities are carried out. Uh, then we have a provision to capture the photograph or video where we do also capture the location during that activity where uh, we should know the object location we should know where the person is taking the photograph of the object uh, both locations are captured then orientation of the camera is captured with the magnetic north the earth and then uh, very uh, user friendly uh, attribute entry mechanism you have like you can key in the information or you can select the information you have multiple selections many uh, other methods are there to capture the value added information then you have a provision to send the information immediately to the data center if you have internet connectivity if you don't have internet connectivity in such scenario you have options to store that information and then send it in the later stage where you get when you get internet connectivity so you have even uh, the provision to uh, understand the unsent information basically the uh, there may be a communication failure while transferring the data from mobile to server and that can be addressed uh, using uh, unsent observation uh, option where uh, the data is getting organized uh, if the data is not totally transferred from mobile to server in that unsent option and then subsequently we can uh, we can get that information and push that information to the data center then we have provision to edit the attribute uh, basically in the mobile as well as the client side where uh, the client side basically the moderators uh, basically the one level high officer officials who uh, validate the information which is coming from field to server are uh, are been uh, have been carried out during that process we can even uh, att uh, attributes can be edited then uh, subsequently you can have a delete option or a reject option in the data collection process and there is a, a device id concept inbuilt in it where the automatically uh, once you install the application a device id is generated and that is being used to have a control over the uh, crowd of for which the data is getting sent from mobile to the server then every mobile application has the user profile where the uh, the person who is in the field uh, is collecting the data and need to fill his profile which will have basically the uh, name yeah, basically it can be a, you can have an user id also then he has to have the mobile number and the organization place he belong to so these information are uh, put up and these information is tagged to all the observations which are coming from mobile to the server then we have a, as i told you uh, we have a concept called as control crowdsourcing because we do uh, control the crowd based on the device id and uh, the trusted users can be uh, can be uh, tagged and then we can eliminate some of the uh, basically validations uh, which are carried out at the client side so those things are in place then we do have offline maps uh, where uh, where there is no internet facility in the field and that can be this feature can be used to have the satellite data in your mobile application and then use them uh, in the field um how it has evolved it's actually uh, in 2009 we have started and first application which we have uh, floated in 2011 where we uh, we have done this activity to uh, to capture the uh, the crop conditions at different parts of the country where under a fossil project yeah, it has it has went it has gone uh, operational in 2000 2012 and then subsequently during uh, post Kedarnath disaster we could able to use students almost in the order of 300 plus uh, to capture 
uh, the disasters, uh, post-disaster even, which has happened uh, during that period. And uh, you can know that these applications uh, need not have internet connectivity to capture the information. So we could actively capture our uh, uh, the order of uh, 20,000 for the Kedarnath disaster. Uh, these using Kedar and disaster application. And we have reported that to uh, Department of Science and Technology, Government of India on this, which was a very well appreciated activity which during those days. Then in 2014, if you see, you we have supported election commission of India where we have developed three different types of applications where uh, the incident reporting application, then uh, basic minimum facility application, and then vehicle tracking application. These three applications interact each other, and then it uh, actually builds a single solution. This basic minimum facility of a polling station is uh, actually the activities carried out before six months of the election, where to identify the polling stations and which, which must have the basic minimum facilities in it like electricity, toilets for men and women, then uh, we should have uh, a railing or a uh, non-staircase uh, facility for the challenged people. All that need to be part of a polling station, so that need to be captured. There are about 17 basic uh, parameters which need to be there. So these were captured uh, within two weeks time because uh, we could able to do it for Andhra Pradesh. And they were about um, 60,000 plus uh, polling stations and uh, no time we could be able to do it. But whereas if you do adopt the traditional method, it used to take about uh, six months time to capture that and then put that in one place and analyze it. So um, that was the uh, good advantage we get from these mobile applications. Apart from that, we have floated some incident reporting mobile application where incidents during uh, the elections or just before the elections, after the elections, incidents were captured. Uh, the facility was there like even we can, if uh, the election officer can report that's one of the EVM missions are in um, a faulty EVM mission that can be reported and immediately that can be rectified uh, using the vehicle tracking solution where uh, the sectorial officers are placed with the additional uh, duplicate EVM missions where that can be replaced with the with the faulty ones. So these uh, actually these the three applications interact to each other and then uh, build a solution out of that. And we have given the uh, the screen uh, where even the election commissioner can see it uh, in real, real, real time what is happening on the ground. So this was that. And then in, uh, in 2015 frame, we have developed a Bhuvan Panchat mobile application where the uh, the Panchat level assets have been mapped during uh, using this solution. Uh, then there were some major uh, national imperative projects, which were, uh, I will take you through uh, this is basically during uh, COVID, we have developed a solution which will actually have a navigation alert system for the citizens uh, where uh, if you find it, I mean, it will automatically develop a COVID uh, uh, zone, um, can, can, uh, zone and then that will actually uh, alert the user. Uh, if you enter that zone, uh, that was the solution. But it was actively used in, um, effectively used basically in uh, Narayan Pet uh, district in Telangana. Then uh, uh, we, this application actually had some new components like uh, we uh, had facility like uh, doing some GS operations within the mobile. Uh, where uh, Android-based uh, solutions were given and then the offline data is getting generated. Then it does some analysis on that overlay analysis. Then it brings out a decision to like know whether uh, it automatically does in the mobile itself. It's not again linked to the server and get some information from the server. It's not so like that. So that's the solution which we, we have uh, uh, developed. But in fact, the kind of Connection to the server was there, uh, where uh, to report some information about the uh, COVID symptoms, people with COVID symptoms, that also was there. So that is getting reported and that information also gets shared to the uh, mobiles which nearing the uh, near the vicinity. 
So that's how it is. Uh, quarantine places, all that have been mapped on this. Uh, the another important application was as uh, Bhuvan Manrega, there it is uh, put up in two different phases. The first phase uh, represents only inter, you know, that is inventory of these geotags. There are about uh, 3.84 crore assets we have been uh, captured um, and then uh, put up. Then uh, subsequently we had one more solution for uh, basically validating the information or evaluating the inventory which was captured using by some third party, uh, which is appointed by government of India. Then in phase two, we are capturing in three different stages uh, before, during and after. And uh, now if you see there are 4.79 crore assets are getting monitored um, uh, on across, across all the states in India. And we here also we have implemented since this is basically a monitoring solution. We have implemented geofencing concept where before doing uh, carrying out the, the activity, the person has to go and geotag the information. And once uh, that location information is there, then he will be uh, geotagging the activity again in the during stage. In the during stage is basically the work is should be in progress and then uh, the photograph is captured photograph cannot be captured away from the location which we have captured earlier so the the first stage must have uh, the information or tagged information for the place where the work is going to start and you cannot change that location in the later stage so that was a uh, that was a solution adopted and that was very effectively implemented uh, and proven the accountability and uh, uh, transparency in the system so this was one of the very good uh, uh, examples of uh, uh, geotagging activity in india and uh, subsequently we have also um, Put up for uh, a solution for monitoring the house constructions. This is under Pradhan Mantri Awaz Yojana Urban, where 66 plus lakh houses are basically beneficiaries are getting benefited for construction of house. So the house construction is monitored at five different stages. Um, then um, you can see it in the image bottom, like you no, know, not started stage, foundation stage, lintel stage, roof stage, and completion stage. You can see if you see all these stages put together and then you can see how the houses grown are moved forward where we have here also we have implemented geofencing concept so that the surveyor who captures the information um, is guided to go to the right location and then only uh, geotag and uh, there are some uh, different uh, user friendly solutions or modules were developed like a uh, bulk data uploading and that sort of a thing the navigation and all, all that features where they are part of this uh, solution. Um, this is uh, about uh, Bhuvan HFA. Now uh, we are going to come uh, with the beneficiary based solution in Bhuvan HFA where beneficiaries themselves uh, can uh, tag and report the status of the house construction where earlier the surveyors of the ULBs are are actually identified to do this activity. Now uh, we are going ahead with the uh, the beneficiaries themselves uh, can tag that information and get uh, that can be reported and subsequently the funding or the support from the government will uh, take place. Um, uh, now, uh, there is another important uh, application, Bhuvan NSSO, where um, urban frame survey activities have uh, been captured. Um, I mean, survey has been conducted in almost 8,000 towns. Uh, earlier, uh, this survey was active from 1956. Every five years, the survey used to take place. It has to be, it used to be in manual uh, mode where hand drawn sketches were used uh, in this in this survey but the first time uh, we have uh, put up in the digital mode where a, a, where mapping is being carried out in a gs environment so if you see the household surveys have been uh, done uh, in this survey and then uh, 
the uh, ULB ward boundary, IV unit boundary, block boundary, town boundaries are been uh, are been I mean drawn are derived from this survey. So this is very effectively uh, being used by um, NSSO team. Um, this uh, this is basically for uh, International Day of Yoga. We have been supporting them from 2018, 19, and then due to pandemic, uh, it was not effectively implemented in 2020, but 21 it was suspended. Now 22, we have uh, the government has started this promoting this yoga. Then uh, this year we could able to uh, capture the events at an order of 3,875 locations covering 30 states. It's 51 lakh uh, basically participants were took, um, I mean, um, participated in the yoga activity during that particular day, that is 21st uh, June. So this was uh, basically a screenshot pertaining to 2019, 2020, I could not keep. Okay, fine. Uh, then, um, then comes the Bhuvan CDMA. This is basically a property mapping solution where uh, in the phase one, 72 ULBs were mapped, all the properties in the ULBs are mapped in order, order of 12 lakh properties were there. Then we could able to get good result out of this uh, because uh, the government could get the uh, increase in the property tax collection because the during the uh, construction time, the house would be in different shape, but whereas now it would have been I mean improved or additional flows have been come up, would have come up. So uh, that actually has reported and then re-evaluation took place and huge amount of uh, money has been kept, uh, uh, been collected. Uh, this has been done for Telangana Government of Telangana, Commissioner and Directorate of Municipal Admin Administration. Now we seeing the importance of this. What has happened is uh, the in second phase they have come up with the classification of the building, then um, the type of use of the building, then different uh, categories we have in the form of a trade, then um, the water connectivity, electricity, all that is being captured using this uh, solution in the phase two, where uh, more amount of information has been captured and that has been done for 134 ULBs where it is very huge uh, data has been captured for these and then um, I think it is in the final stages uh, where they are going to come up with this, some uh, some solution where, where uh, they were going to uh, reassess the property tax and then they are going to get in very huge amount. Uh, this is, was the uh, information we got from CDMA. Then the subsequently, we could uh, able to geotag all post offices in India, where 1.5 lakh post offices were tagged in just six months time. We have not conducted any training for this. We have just simply floated the app. The app is very simply uh, simplified a solution we have given. Then. Uh, uh, there was only a single uh, help document which was there and that could be done. So all postmasters were identified this activity and we could able to do it. All this and over it, now we have on Bhuvan, there is a separate solution where application where you can, if you are standing on a road and you are new to that place, you can search for the post office on Bhuvan, it will uh, navigate you or direct you to reach that based on the service and the time uh, you have. So you can have even search oper operation based on proximity analysis, like uh, basically um, if you give a five kilometers radius, which are the post offices available in your area. So such uh, such mechanism is in place. Um, now uh, going to the next one, this is basically, basically science related activity where Bhuvan Fasal, which was first application which uh, we have floated in 2011, still it is continuing even in 22. There it has been effectively used and it has been used for assessing the yield, um, the crop yield estimation. Uh, it has been used, and I think there are about eight different crops are being uh, monitored or uh, computed. Uh, using this application. Then uh, Bhuvan Rui is again uh, the cotton board related activity where 
uh, fiber crop information system. We are supporting it using this application. Every year we get about uh, 80,000 plus observations uh, during the season. And then uh, the again the yield, then some guidance is given to the farmers using this uh, solution. Uh, the Harpath is one of the good examples of uh, urban related activity. Uh, where uh, roads are being monitored, potholes on the roads are being reported by the citizens, and then um, the subsequently within the within a predefined timeline, uh, the information will go to the engineers on the field, and then uh, they have to rectify their roads uh, within a stipulated time. If you don't uh, complete that activity and report back in the app again, um, it will escalate to the higher authorities. And that's how it has been monitored by CMO. Uh, it is developed for government of Haryana. And if you see here, we uh, we have actually transferred this technology to the Haryana government, and now they are handling on their own. Uh, we we have recruited two people to support them, project scientists, and then uh, they have ta taken over. And these are some of the achievements which we got, like um, that is uh, 22,000 downloads. We could do it uh, within a few months. Then 21,000 complaints we got when we were handling this. And then uh, 14,000 plus where complaints were attended and closed and repaired. And that was very effectively used application. Uh, these are some of the additional devices like uh, Gagan and uh, Navik. Now, um, Navic is coming in some mobiles, um, which uh, need, need to be tested now. But uh, in Android, uh, we do support even external devices uh, where uh, Gagan Bluetooth receivers or USB-based receivers are, you can connect to the mobile. And our apps are there, which will receive the information from the um, basically external device. A location is captures from the external device, and we will process it for the remaining uh, thing so if you see here uh, there are some applications like a uh, forest plantation mapping is happening uh, for Uttar Pradesh and Tripura where they do use these Gagan devices for precise location capturing uh, because it do you get an at an order of uh, one plus uh, meters accuracy so you can effectively map and then area also can be computed very nicely and uh, Navic uh, it is our own uh, the navigation constellation where uh, we are at the moment supporting with the, the external device as well as we do have a mobile app but um, it needs some ch uh, changes in the OS level so we have requested some mobile uh, makers to carry out those changes that will be once that is effect uh, affected in effective in place then then and that can be used so we do uh, do some uh, operations like overlay analysis, proximity analysis, all that is being uh, put up in that uh, solution. Um, now, uh, this is the summary. Um, you can see, like I have spoken about uh, Manrega, then housing for all, I have spoken NSSO. Then RKVY is one application where uh, the uh, we have developed for Ministry of Agriculture where assets of uh, uh, Gram Panchat level uh, data is captured. And then uh, PDMC, this is again one important application where uh, per drop more crop. Uh, this is PDMC stands for per, per crop, uh, per drop more crop, uh, where uh, water conservation activities are being monitored in that. Bhuvan Drushti is again uh, integrated watershed development uh, management program. It is being uh, effectively implemented in many states. Uh, 1.2 million uh, geotags have been reported and it has been monitored is, since it is a watershed like uh, basically check dam constructions. Um, that sort of a thing are monitored using this uh, solution. Then um, this is one interesting uh, solution which uh, I would like to put to you is basically house geotagging uh, our solution for AP Housing uh, Corporation, AP State Housing Corporation Limited. It is a basically uh, government uh, department, government uh, 
in organization where 45 lakh houses have been monitored in five different stages we are doing it from uh, 2014 and it is effectively used even till now uh, the rest of the things, Bhuvan drug is basically um, the geotagging of medical stores and then hospitals we could able to geotag for the state of Andhra Pradesh. And now uh, we can have a solution like if you have an MS where the stock of medicines and that can be tagged to the uh, medical store location, then that will give you um, the, I mean, uh, for the citizens where if they can type the drug name it will identify and give you um, the medical store which can provide that particular medicine those are sort of solutions can be in place uh, but it is not uh, developed totally uh, it is only geotagging activity we could able to complete but uh, drug related status uh, in the medical store it need to be in place it is not effectively implemented uh, Bhuvan Rusa is one application where we have developed for HRD ministry where Rusa related activities are monitored using this application. Then uh, Bhuvan TS crop is again a irrigation related activity where um, crop uh, basically irrigation potential of the area is being computed using this solution. So these are some of the uh, examples I had. Uh, solutions I had and uh, that's all I have if you have any questions you can put up uh, Harish we can take up some questions from here Harish Uh, just a moment, I'll just find some questions here. I have YouTube connected to me. Right. Uh, one Mr. Manas Patel. What is Bhuvan State View and Navic? Uh, there is a question called uh, Navic, our own GPS. What is its uh, different mobiles? There are some mobiles uh, uh, linked to Navic, uh, uh, like. Uh, MI uh, 9 Pro is there uh, where uh, it is told that it is uh, it is giving uh, but the the accuracy of the Navic is not um, so at the moment uh, but you will get uh, soon you will be getting a better accuracy on that uh, it is not as good as, as uh, you you get it at five meters no soon you will be getting it uh, people are improving on that. Uh, any other questions? Harish, are you there? Yeah, let, yeah. So there is one question. Yeah. Like when we are doing this geo tagging, no? Like uh, which GPS uh, data we are, I mean, uh, platform we are using, and what is the accuracy of the geo tagging? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, what we do is uh, we try to get less than ten meters accuracy uh, because we ensure. Uh, that the GPS, the signals which we are getting is from the GPS satellites only. Um, that how we may, there is that's how you develop the code and then uh, get the improved accuracy. Um, we do some standard deviation. We are adopt, adopt some standard deviation method um, to get this actually. If you uh, if you are not getting from the satellite, if you are getting from the cell towers, because all these mobile have got assisted GPS initially you get information from the cell towers and then subsequently from the satellites so the these signals from the cell towers may not have much high accuracy so in such scenario what happens is uh, initially you will not get high accuracy mode though uh, what we do is we do some uh, statistical we adopt some statistical approach which will give us a good accuracy any other question? Hope I answered it. Uh, 
Uh, there is one question why Navic is not being ma mass implementation in the Indian uh, mobiles. Yeah, soon we are going to get, if you see already, uh, these uh, Navic must be used. Sorry, uh, Navic must be used in the uh, in the vehicles transport that is public uh, vehicles. Uh, it is a mandatory by government of India, uh, which has made mandatory. So the devices are in place. Uh, the the I mean the the vehicles which are purchased, uh, I think after 2021 have must have these Navic devices. So it is in place. But in mobiles, soon we are going to get. There are some mobiles, uh, almost like 10 uh, different types of mobiles which we have, uh, which supports Navic. Um, further, it need to improve. Yeah, any other questions? Um, there is one question like uh, on government organization. So yeah, uh, there is one uh, uh, question like uh, they want to uh, implement these mobile application in uh, service roads and bridges. Uh, yeah, it can be effectively used. Um, since you are from a government department, you can write to Bhuvan. Uh, we will try to help you out uh, on this development activity. Uh, Parish, I think that's all I have. If you have any questions, you can. Uh, yes, sir. Actually, I mean, related to your talk, I think those are the questions that you have already taken. So, other questions yeah. uh, like the uh, app for underground water potential zones and similarly the soil health uh, can we use the soil health uh, card with this app so these questions uh, yeah. probably will take up uh, in the next uh, class that is on the water resources and uh, yes. like uh, you have already taken this uh, navic why it is uh, been not mass implemented i think uh, the, this also um, has a bearing on the kind of frequency bands the mobile phones use uh, so that is one of the reasons uh, because uh, whatever the bands Navic supports uh, is in a slightly different range that cannot be directly I mean, implemented as a chip in the mobile phones. So that is really one of the reasons I assume why there is a delay for mass implementation. Yes, you are right. You are right, uh, Harish. The reason is uh, we started these Navic signals uh, from L5 and then S-band. Now uh, the latest launches which will have L1 also. So L1 actually uh, it has a frequency which GPS also uses. So slowly all the uh, receivers which are available in the market can use Navic. That is uh, slowly it is going to come. Maybe in one, <coughs> one year or so. Yes, sir. Similarly, uh... Is forest uh, patta mapping up for Tripula available? Probably uh, uh, we have a session on the forest fires. Probably we can take these questions uh, during uh, that particular talk. Anyway, the, uh, the query is uh, noted down. And we'll uh, put it to the uh, speaker when he gives the talk. Um, so I think that's it from the Q&A. Uh, and I thank... Uh, Mr. Leslie for his uh, wonderful talk and also his uh, patience in answering some of the uh, queries that you have posted. So we'll uh, move ahead. Yeah. So He's already there, so probably he'll uh, switch on the his uh, video and uh, audio.
Yeah. Meantime, uh, I think there were some queries related to the, uh, some of you not getting the registration link. Uh, well, uh, the registration link is closed. So we are not taking any new registrations as such. So those who are already registered before the due time, uh, they were provided with the access to the YouTube and also the uh, link to attempt the quiz. So for new registrations, uh, currently we are, uh, I mean, we have disabled the link. So probably uh, you can uh, apply for the next Bhuvan webinar that is uh, scheduled somewhere in September. So probably uh, then if you are a registered user, only you will be getting that uh, link for the uh, attempt, attempt to the quiz and also the uh, certificate. Yeah, and for the, for uh, submitting your quiz, uh, the cutoff is uh, minimum th 33%. So that means out of 12, you, are, you need to score greater than 33% or uh, equal to uh, in order to uh, qualify for uh, getting the certificate, right? So that means you need to at least answer five to six correct uh, questions. Uh, in order to get the certificate. So the cutoff is uh, for each place, it is uh, the 33%. Okay then, so we'll uh, wait for, uh, uh, for a minute or two uh, for the speaker, I think he's uh, getting ready so meantime uh, i request all of you to kindly stay put in this uh, session so we'll uh, we'll resume the talk very soon
गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल मैं ऑडियो बोल So, in YouTube. In the use of my uh, this uh, device. Yeah. how the strength of bowen as a geo platform can be made use of for various applications especially in the domain of water and uh, rural and urban themes okay now why we need bowen application okay first we should have answer to that question then only we can um, proceed further you may be a user from government agents says government departments can be central government department or state government departments or you can be from industry or you can be an ngo non government organization or you can be a common man for each one of us the geo is relevant like and information also relevant geo information also relevant for each one of us whatever role we play in the uh, organization or as a common man we have every uh, every one of us have some role or other related to the your position on the earth so that's where it is relevant relevant here okay now individually we have some information like if i have i have mobile i can locate myself in uh, a map but other than that if you want some other information where from you will get that's where the bone geo platform is of use to you okay and your need is uh, uh, varying depending on what kind of uh, application that you are going to do okay if you are government agencies you want to monitor the government programs or plan uh, government program Or, uh, or take some decision uh, based on uh, certain information made available. So it depends on the application, depends on the need for which you want to use this geo information, geo platform, go on geo platform. Okay, uh, I'm not going into detail. I'll try to go into examples. Now this is your Boon homepage, the new homepage where uh, you have different categories of applications. 
like for visualization free download you have an application sectors so i will be talking about some of the examples in this application sectors that you see here as agriculture water forestry and out of this i'll be talking about agriculture and water and urban and rural domains okay so first i'll be showing some examples from agriculture applications the first application is uh, agricultural pest and disease surveillance okay so i will not read out what is there in the screen you can always see and you will be shared with this presentation later by the organizers what essentially i would like to put in your mind is how the strength of bone geo platform can be made use of for different kind of application i'll be giving some examples for each one is of unique in nature okay this application what you are saying is that the information that is collected through official channel as well as crowd sourcing about the pest and diseases occurrence in the country across the country okay the information that comes through mobile app is made available for visualization here now you must be wondering what is that uh, someone can use this there are two ways this information can be used one is when you report if you are a farmer in your field there is a particular kind of pest or disease occur occurred in a particular season either curry for rabi season you can inform that through this portal your local agricultural officials or the concerned officials can understand and give you the appropriate advisories through different channel medias like you no know, there are in uh, all india radio you have some uh, daily bulletin where formal advisories are given so if they come to know through this board portal in a particular area a particular kind of pest or disease occurrence is happening they will give appropriate advisories that is one side the other side is if you as a individual farmer would like to know a similar kind of disease occurring somewhere in the, across the country so you can can get to know where it is what is that environment why it is happening you will have that additional information and you can plan on your own so i'm just giving example so it is a single window system for information collection and knowledge exchange okay so that is why we call it as geo platform where apart from the information you also have the location information available and uh, it is available in real time so that is the strength of bone okay this is another uh, example the previous example can be used for both uh, governance as well as uh, common man citizen centric application this specific application what you are seeing here on the screen is called geo tagging of assets created under a particular program of government of india rashtriya krishi vikas yojana like this many applications are there on bone platform again see as a if you are a developer you can understand from this application what kind of information is geo tagged how it is visualized what kind of queries are there okay that is for the developers if you are from a domain area a user uh, a, a domain again it can be classified as a governance somebody in the governance or somebody in the ngo or somebody in the society okay i'll take example of ngo now any ngo can come uh, to this application and go through understand what kind of assets or activities carried out under rashtriya krishi vikas yojana these are all approved activities under this program after implementation the information is geotagged and made available here. so if the ngo want to advise in their area of work somebody to get some funding under this program they can go through this they will have some understanding about what kind of assets are created or activities are carried out they can advise them so this is how it is something like information exchange in a single window platform for across the country this is one way another way is if a government the implementing agency the department wants to know what is the progress of the program they can sit in front of the system and come to know see if you, uh, at uh, for different states how the performance is which state is doing well which state is lagging behind all these things can be monitored using this platform see one activity done through geo tagging can serve many applications okay this is another example in agriculture where plantation mapping is done especially plantation like tea coffee and other uh, uh, plantations like fruits or commercial crops again see the strength of bone is you have the mobile uh, applications that you might have heard in the previous talk 
and the various geospatial areas available in a web platform for which the specific information, like in this case, plantation information, comes and sits over here. This again, I want to give an example of somebody in the industry that they, they can make use of this mission. Say they know what is the terrain, what is the area, the environment where a particular kind of plantation is grown. If he wants to have similar plantation in some other area, he can make use of this information and take a decision where what kind of the environment is required. Or if he is uh, some, uh, somebody from the export industry or import industry, he will be able to understand what is the extent of plantations, which part of the country the plantations are, what type of plantations there. He can uh, take a decision to locate his industry. It can be a processing industry or uh, input supply industry. So for this kind of decision makings, this application will also give answer to where, where he can locate or where he can source it. Okay. So that is the advantage of having such kind of applications. Next comes to water application. See, in agriculture, whatever I have listed, three applications doesn't mean that only three applications are there. There are plenty of applications available in Bone Geo platform. Some are available in this uh, directly. Some are uh, customized for a specific user, which may not be available for public. But uh, the example that I'm trying, trying to give through this uh, half an hour talk is to trigger your thoughts. And again, it is left to you. You understand understand your requirement and make use of the, uh, if you are a developer, make use of the APS available in Joe, uh, Bone Geo platform, customize to the, your user need and make it available for the user. Or if you are a user, you are from a government departments, you know how different government departments are making use of Bone Geo platform. You can also ask for your own department through uh, Bone team. Okay. Now, this is another example of uh, application in the water domain. Okay. Here, one state government has conducted baseline study and the strength of Bowen, again, the platform is that is, this is being used for information generation. The previous cases, the information collection has happened, like through mobile apps. In this case study, information generation itself happens over the Bowen Geo platform. See, what you see on the screen is a high resolution satellite image available as a web service in the Bowen and uh, the field officials have their field maps using that map and using the satellite data iron satellite data available they have created the geospatial layer of the irrigation systems for around uh, six irrigation projects for uh, in the state they have done not only that they have added additional information from the field using mobile app then they have used it for comparing different irrigation projects over the entire state so that is the strength of it. So the main uh, interest of uh, uh, point, point of interest to you here is information generation creation using the Bone Geo platform. Okay. And uh, we have another uh, main applications in Bone Geo platform. See, essentially here, this application water bodies information system, uh, it is hosted on Bone Geo platform by taking into account the uh, hardware and uh, other say, geospatial data strength available in the Bone. But the information that comes is, comes through an automatic process and Bowen platform is being used for delivering that information to the common man, public. Okay. This information, this portal contains spread area information for most of the water bodies in the country, which are at least uh, 0.5 hectares and above size. As and when a satellite covers that water body, the area is estimated automatically and the information provided in this platform. The information on water spread area is available right from 2012 onwards. Okay. And one can uh, click on a particular, particular water body, visualize the time series water spread area and people can download the area information also. Now this portal has been recently updated with additional information on water quality in terms of turbidity and chlorophyll that is also there. I, I request you to go through uh, this application. Again, each one of you have different takeaway from this application. How the information is made available in near real time in a web uh, application using Bowen uh, Geo platform strength. And also the additional information that can be derived for various other applications also is mentioned here. There is one technical document in this portal. You can go through that. Like we are also, pro Bowen also provides web services of these information, not only the satellite thermatic data, even the information as web service also is being provided for different uh, prior departments, both 
state and central government agencies one such application is fisheries department we are making available this information there is another unique application in the water domain where like the previous application the information generation creation is done here entire country project monitoring under accelerated irrigation benefit program is being carried out using this bhuvan geo platform application where not only the linear uh, information about any irrigation canal network is done even the structures across the canal with their attributes all are made available this is what is done in the previous application examples but in this application apart from this information generation creation the irrigation potential assessment is also done online by clicking on button for a project what is the total potential created is estimated and given as a report to the user here the user is central water commission because they are the one that are uh, interested with the job of monitoring abp project okay so the idea of showing this application is if your requirements are clear customization is easier having everything available in one single platform this is another example where the state water resources department of maharashtra is enabled with both uh, own platform as well as mobile platform to collect the information visualize the information and use those information for their decision making <coughs> this is another flagship uh, application from bowen that's called telangana water information system first of the kind of application generated that developed by bowen team for any state water department okay this water information system has all kind of features you have uh, a tool for creating information visualization query and real time dissemination of the data from state water resource department like uh, entire telangana state you have automatic weather station data com coming in this system on daily basis the reservoir levels coming in daily basis the groundwater level data for all the wells observation was in the state coming every month the first week of the month so everything is automatic the information generated information is created information is published in one single platform it has a wealth of information any official in the state irrigation department can go through this portal and understand they need, they can also know about their own project they can also know about other projects in the state okay there some of the snapshots which i was referring like uh, the tools that was available to generate command area map for all the tank irrigation system in this state and the groundwater it is not only real time information you can see the historic data of groundwater level i generally i give an example here see for example if you want to buy a, 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 a real estate plot in some part of telangana you can go to the nearby well and see how the groundwater fluctuation is so if you are planning to buy agricultural land so you can make use of this information i'm just giving example whereas uh, overall using gis operations you also have a spatial information about the groundwater draft and replenishment over different time is also made available in this portal we also made uh, one application exclusively for national mission for clean ganga again all the information about ganga basin made out in single lo single location the information source from multiple departments so that is the advantage of having a web gis platform information source is different but the uh, availability is at one location single window system sort of thing and we also made available some information from satellite data in uh, uh, a trial basis on water quality and one mobile application is also available for public to report any pollution across river ganga so anybody can report the pollution related issues here and the officials concerned officials all the state in this ganga basin can visualize or the national mission for clean ganga officials also can visualize not only the water quality related things the stp related uh, information uh, and uh, the data measured by central pollution control board all this information available in one platform okay. another major application that is available in bhuvan geo platform is called the geo special hydro product products and services which was uh, launched last year this is an exclusive portal within the bhuvan geo platform where the geo special products and services generated by national remonitoring center under national hydrology project funded by world bank and ministry of jal shakti 
this information is available in one location. There are around uh, eight major projects under this national technology project and each one of them I will be showing some examples and this specific portal is different from other applications in the sense here the download of products is also available for any user. So these are the list of activities which I, I, I will study here. Anyway, you can go through this list later. I will not read out these things. As I said, uh, total eight activities out of which seven uh, activities are generating geospatial products and services on daily basis or monthly basis or fortnightly basis at different time periods and different uh, area of interest. Like some of the products are the country level, some of the products are Himalayan levels. I will be uh, showing each one of them some examples. See this is Himalayan snow cover information system. Daily snow cover information is made available in this portal, model of the NHP portal for visualization as well as download. Not only this snow cover information, you also have during summer months snow melt runoff information. So anybody can see at each pixel level what is the expected snow melt runoff on daily basis. Apart from that, we also provide three day forecast of snow melt runoff. Next three days, what are the expected snow melt? There are all models inbuilt and the total system is automated. The information goes into this system in real time. If somebody wants to understand the total process of uh, uh, information portal, one can go through this portal, right? From information generation, automation, dissemination, everything is already on one platform. Another example is National Hydrology Modeling System, where the hydrology model is set up for the entire country. The water balance components on, on runoff, the open transmission, three layers, soil moisture information made available on daily basis in this module of NHP portal. Apart from these basic variables, we also have derived information based on this, like forecast surface runoff, inflow into some of the major reservoirs in the country is also available. And again, we have options to download this data for yourself. Another model in this application is National Evaporative Flux Monitoring System. This port, uh, model gives daily actual Evapor transpiration at pixel level for the entire country from satellite based data. Okay, again, you click any location in the country, any pixel, you get the time series uh, evapor transpiration value, or you can visualize time series spatial map. Third option is you can also download the products from this site. Uh, the fourth activity under this project is National Hydrological Drought Information System. Currently, two hydrology drought indices based products are available. One is on standardized runoff index, another is standardized groundwater index. Again, the information, see whatever information I'm showing, all not only available in real time, even historic information also available in these applications. Again, the information available for the entire country for this uh, SRI, for uh, standardized groundwater index, it is available only for the Telangana state, where you have the real time groundwater information available. Again, the information available at uh, different spatial units unit level, either pixel level or state or district level. The fifth application under this Boone NHP portal is spatial flood early warning system. Currently, every monsoon season, the, the forecast hydrograph for two river basin, Tapi and Godavari is being made available in real time. For example, now currently Godavari there is flood every day next to 48 hours to 72 hours forecast is available in this portal for 10 uh, stations across the river Godavari. Okay. And uh, not only the hydrograph, the spatial inundation simulation also made whenever there is a flood event occurs. The spatial area map showing the depth of inundation is also made available in this portal. So one can visualize this. Again, the system is totally automated. We have the uh, another irrigation station support system, it is in the initial phase of the development. Currently, uh, this system is meant for Narayanpur irrigation project in this state of Karnataka, where online we are making available the crop area information and crop order requirement information. This in information system will be developed into a station support system in next one year. Where the canal level advisories for how much water to be released by the irrigation engineer is also will be made available under this portal. So I will uh, uh, take you through some of the examples in urban domain now. Under urban domain, 
first example I would like to show is that municipal limits, high resolution land is land or information is made available from high resolution satellite. And you have, you have a lot of plus query option and you have to so again this utility or tool that is made utility or tool that is made application in Bhuvan, modern in Bhuvan This is this information all available where every five years the urban sprawl, how the urban urbanized area is growing is made available in this application. This information is a derived product of the information that is generated in various other activities by NRSC. And again, you have a spatial resolution click off a, uh, a point of interest, you get the attribute of the information. Essentially, this gives the direction in which an urban area is growing, as well as the rate at which an urban area is growing. So that kind, both these informations can be used for various applications and various decision making process. If you are a common man, you can plan your property acquisition in a direction and in a location where the growth is faster. So I'm just giving an example. Whereas if you are a planner, for your master plan updation, next cycle of master plan generation, you can use this time series information to plan uh, the master plan better. NRSC under uh, different uh, projects have uh, developed a lot of uh, high resolution land is land cover information for many cities in the country. One such activity is called urban information system. Under national urban information system, around 150 plus cities High resolution, large scale land is land care map, map was generated. That information is available in this application. Okay. So uh, it is essentially the land is land care information generated using the particular time period of satellite data. You, you can go through this. The idea of showing this is the amount of information that is available for the entire country is what I am trying to show here. Otherwise, it is a simple uh, visualization and query system. Recently, Bowen team has developed developed what is called urban water body information system. This is meant for decision making of urban authorities to prioritize water bodies in an urban environment under Jal Jeevan mission. Each uh, city or town may have uh, multiple water bodies. Under Jal Jeevan mission, the government of India is providing money for restoration or renovation of the water bodies. So which water bodies to be selected, the decision can be made using some criteria that is available in this application. That's what you are seeing here. And once you select a water body, you can see the four story of that water body, how the land is land cover is changing between two time period. That will help them to understand the surroundings of that water body and take appropriate actions to improve the uh, water quality situation or uh, to improve the inflow into the water body so that that water body is sustainable once it is restored. So that is the kind of application. And this application initially as a prototype uh, developed for 10 cities. It is under the pro process of expansion in, for the initial phase for 500 cities and in the subsequent phase it will be extended for all the major cities and towns in the country. And now I will be taking you through some of the rural applications that will, uh, uh, with that I will be ending my talk. Under rural applications, uh, First one uh, example is for the entire country, the groundwater prospects and the groundwater quality information system is available. The idea of showing is, is <clears throat> the amount of information that is available in Bone Jail platform for the entire country. For any location, you click, you get to know what is the prospect of occurrence of or availability of groundwater if you drill a well. People have used this information, the state public health departments, drinking water emission departments have used this information for drilling the wells, especially for drinking water purpose. Okay. This has two uh, uh, kind of information. One is for common man, public, where limited information available, whereas for authorized users, detailed information about the geological, geomorphological, lithological, 
all those detailed information are so that they can take a better decision about using this information. For common man, only it tells about qualitatively uh, whether the water availability is good or bad or moderate or uh, no water availability or groundwater. Okay? And it also has point information about groundwater quality. It gives an idea about what kind of quality issues, if at all anything is there in particular uh, part of the country, also can be visualized in this Bhujan, Bhuvan Bhujal portal. Another major applications in rural domain is monitoring and evaluation of watersheds. Government of India spends a lot of money, especially Minister of Rural Development, I mean MRD, spends a lot of money in rural development. The concept of development happens at a watershed scale level. Okay, watershed scale is the lowest uh, unit, uh, ideological unit level, where a yes, uh, uh, set of villages come uh, uh, is covered. Okay, so under this uh, portal, the activity that is carried out under this program, different programs, that integrated watershed management program is there, under Mandrig also, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme also a lot of activities are there. All those information, there are different activities are done. What kind of activities are done is also mapped here, made available here. And the impact of these activities can also be monitored using this platform. So this is a one-stop solution, one window where you see the activities that is carried out and what is the impact of those activities. Okay. Bhuvan Mandrega is the one best ex example of making use of the Bhuvan Geo platform for monitoring government programs. Mandrega is a pan-India program where plenty of assets are created every day. Okay. You just see some numbers I have put here. Maybe in the next slide, the latest number is the right side. If you see number of activities that is uh, geotagged and visualized. You have a uh, dashboard also for the uh, um, ministry departments to go through what is the assets created, what is the activity carried out in this program. All this information is not just like that comes, it comes through a proper moderation. So for a developer, you should, we can go through how the moderation happened, at what level the moderation happens. And in at mobile app level, the previous talk, they would have told what kind of moderation happened at app level as well as in the uh, web application level. But you see a course of uh, information has been generated. And NRSC is also helping the state and central government agencies in using this information to assess the impact of this program. With this, I end my talk. If you have any queries, you can uh, put over in chat window or you can ask now or you can send mail later. Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, valuable talk. I think some questions were posted from yesterday's chat also. So they were interested to know, like, what is accuracy of uh, under, uh, groundwater water resources and uh, what is the calibration methods uh, uh, you are using to find out the depth of the groundwater? See, essentially, the groundwater prospects map that I have shown, it doesn't quantitatively give the groundwater depth. depth. It is giving a prospect. That means... What is the prospect of occurrence of groundwater in a particular region based on geological, geomorphological, lithological, and structural information? Then the scientists have also conducted yield test, pump yield test. Based on that, they have quantified what is the expected yield if a well is drilled. And the validation of all this information is done through based on the drilling. Like state government departments, whoever does drilling based on these maps, they give a feedback to us telling that out of, uh, say, uh, n number of uh, drills they have uh, done, how many are successful uh, having successful yield. So the information that we have from some state government departments are uh, ranging from 85 to 95 percent uh, success rate in wherever drilling has happened for these things. You can uh, go through that portal and there's an email address in that. You can write to them. They will be giving more details on this. Sir, anything related to the soil health card we do, are we doing? Yeah, soil health card application also available in Boon up uh, uh, platform. I have not covered that. You can go through that. Again, for some states, this application is made available through a, a, geo, a, a mobile app as well as visualization in Boon Geo platform. Any farmer can know for his field what is the health of soil. 
that for some states is available. Wherever the state that has come forward to work with Bhuvan, for those it is made available. So there's a question like, can we download the watershed layers or this uh, basin level or the sub-basin le uh, level watershed layers? Can we download it from Bhuvan uh, Water Resources? In Bhuvan platform, to my knowledge, I don't think the download of watershed layer is available. But for the information of the person who has asked for this information, the data can be accessed from India Waris portal, India Waters Information System, I-N-D-I-A-W-R-I-S. You can Google it or you can write to them. They'll be sharing. The Central Water Commission, Minister of Water Resources are sharing the basin, sub-basin watershed information from that portal, India Waris portal. You can access them. So there's a I mean, question uh, that uh, can we also monitor the spring water resources in the Himalayan region where groundwater, uh, I mean, is uh, inside the, yeah, mm, uh, under the mountain? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, uh, from remote sensing, it is not uh, feasible. But through indirect methods, some of the institutions in the northern part of the country, they are uh, working on this. Uh, NRC is not working on this currently. But uh, using remote sensing, the technology, remote sensing technology, there is some limitation, but there are other way, means of doing this. Maybe you can uh, access that information in the internet, but currently we are not working on these things. Maybe if you have any more questions, you can always uh, mail to us. Uh, maybe or born at energy.gov.in will be uh, happy to uh, give the feedback or uh, query, answer your queries later. I mean, one question is uh, being posted, sir, but I think, uh, could you please explain about the information about the groundwater also? I think that was already covered uh, yeah. in the previous question. You can go through the Boon Bujal application in Boon platform where the basic details about the application and the methodology, how that information is generated. If it is not sufficient, you can come back to us. We can give more information. Yeah, that is it. So to deliver this uh, talk, uh, we have uh, uh, Dr. S. S. Rajasekhar, uh, who is a head of uh, uh, applications on, uh, I mean, remote sensing application regional centers. Uh, Rajasekhar, sir, you are there? Yes, yes. Arish. Sir, welcome yeah, uh, to me, this uh, webinar, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, sir, I'm able to hear, hear you. So I was just saying uh, welcome to this uh
Yeah. Uh, thank you, Harish, and uh, good morning to all the participants here. And uh, thank you for joining us today. So I'll be just uh, briefly taking you about uh, one of the most important projects uh, of ISRO, which is uh, space-based information support for decentralized planning. This is the overarching umbrella under which uh, uh, we have uh, made one portal called Bon Panchayat. So I'll be speaking about the project, the deliverables, and what are the benefits, and how we are uh, trying to take these benefits to uh, societal schemes and uh, ministry projects. So uh, I hope uh, most of you are uh, from uh, remote sensing uh, domain. So probably you can easily decipher uh, what we are uh, trying to do. So wherever doubt is there or anything, I will necessarily clarify. So um, overall uh, in ISRO, our uh, main focus is to take our data information services to grassroots level. So under this, uh, under, uh, this program, uh, from decades we have been working, but uh, Two decades back, uh, when um, uh, our uh, initial aim at uh, working at a uh, state level and then district level, then we started going into higher scales of information generation. At that time, you are aware under the 73rd Amendment of the Constitution, Panchayat Raj institutions have been empowered. They have been uh, given very good um, uh, support uh, financially and also hierarchically for making their own plans and start improving from bottom to top. So this um, uh, really uh, required some time to uh, pass through through uh, different uh, states and their uh, ministries and how they are going to implement their uh, uh, development programs. So initially, though it was um, handmade programs, uh, plannings, and uh, later on they graduate into different uh, MIS uh, technologies and all. But always uh, you know that natural resources and their understanding is very, very important for any planning on ground level. So. For this, we started supporting them uh, by providing satellite imagery and all the derived layers, especially uh, related to our uh, drainage, watersheds, and uh, many other land use, land cover, and many other layers. So slowly, this technology has um, uh, caught up, and uh, uh, later on, they started imbibing this into their planning as a scientific method of uh, planning. And then uh, Ministry of Panchayat Raj has uh, given guidelines uh, Usually they're called uh, RADFIG guidelines in which this has become mandatory. So with this uh, overview, I'll uh, just take you to this uh, SysDP, uh, which has started somewhere around the 2009-10 time frame. So we started uh, giving data directly for this purpose. And uh, here uh, we started with a very high resolution data, like a 2.5 meter uh, entire uh, India satellite imagery. And uh, we have created DEM first time in the country at the 10 meter resolution so that uh, wherever planning is there it can actually uh, go on in a gis uh, supported domain spatially and uh, from that dem uh, we started uh, deriving all the sub layers like a slope and then attaching drainage to it so that each and every layer is matching to uh, each other talking to each other and then interpretation of the particular area and components of development can easily Plant. So, NNRMS um, is a national natural resources management system. It has carried out many uh, such projects, and SysDP is one of the uh, major projects for Panchayatra uh, empowerment. So, the main goal, as I told you, is empowering Panchayatra institutions. So, it is not a direct solution or uh, end to end program, what we are trying to do from ISCO, but it is always a supporting program. So, we are trying to empower Panchayatra in this area. And in the second phase, we started updating. So many of the Grampanjas, we have shown physically how important it is and uh, how plans can be developed. MOPR has taken up further. And uh, for all the Grampanjas today, we have one is to 10,000 scale database. So this is a very, very big asset. And the intangible benefits of this projects are immense. Uh, so you can understand that all the state government ministries, everybody is looking for this data and they are trying to put in their own uh, planning procedures. 
Later on, we have done capacity building, uh, just like uh, this training, many other trainings we have given dedicatedly for doing planning exercises. So, and as an offshoot of this project, uh, we have carried out many other sub-projects wherein we have created some mobile applications for collecting ground data uh, wherever possible. So, overall, this is the goal, as I told you, satellite imagery maps. And so, now these are available for entire country and they are getting updated as and when uh, data is uh, getting updated. And for future missions also, we are envisaging that um, much higher resolution, probably uh, one sir, meter to one. If I may interrupt, Rajshikhar sir. Yeah. yeah. I think whatever the slides uh, you are sharing, I think they are, they are yeah. not properly visible. So can you, okay. can you just reshare, reshare the slides? Because sure, sure. the slide we are able to see, but the matter in them, the text in that slide, uh, it is not clearly visible. Maybe bandwidth resolution, okay. I'll just reshare. This slide was, uh, the text was not clearly visible. Yeah. And uh, that picture in picture, uh, win uh, that window also, if you can just uh, drag it uh, by the side, yeah, sure, because sure, it's sure. right over this uh, PPT. Okay. Yeah, oh, fine, sir. Fine? You can go ahead. Yeah. So yes, I'll sir. just uh, reiterate the objectives. Uh, so some of the main objectives uh, for empowering Panchayat Raj institutions. So satellite imagery base will be continuously coming from upcoming missions also. And it will go to finer and finer scales as per the uh, policies of uh, remote sensing and GIS. And then objective two, yes, we have uh, made one is to 10,000 scale maps. And uh, with the availability of a higher resolution, probably we'll go into much better scales. So we have created a large uh, data bank here. So of all the imagery, thematic map, slope, and uh, many other things. And we have organized census data also into it because uh, planning is not just um, possible only with natural resources. On-ground um, availability of assets and uh, actually the population living there, the socioeconomic status, many things come into big shift. So we started uh, uh, assimilating all these data with the help of NIC and other state departments. So overall, our aim is to provide asset mapping and activity planning along with a so overall, a profiler and a geo visualization profiler and geo visualization circle for each of the panchayat level uh, activity plannings. So this is the kind of uh, high resolution satellite imagery we started with. And then um, you can see this is a uh, much better, like uh, this is quite good for planning purposes. You can see each and every um, cadastral also here and uh, most of the uh, features are clearly visible. So at the end, um, what we have done is the CCDB database, which is a digital database, one is to 10,000 skill. We are getting LULC drainage, roads, slope, uh, roads and rail. And uh, administrative boundaries, we got it from uh, Survey of India and other places. And uh, cadastral boundaries, very few states they have given us. So wherever it is uh, required, they can overlay and uh, do a better planning. Now, uh, overall, this is what we are having, so land use land cover earlier. Uh, uh, earlier we had a few classes around 27 plus uh, and um, 
latest uh, land is land cover we have upgraded some of the classes in uh, level 2 and level 3 uh, and uh, bifurcated some of them i'll be giving you those uh, things also so that information and it's a enriched really LC as of uh, now coming in now this uh, project will be over by 2023 so today we started collecting database which are being uh, developed by state uh, partner agencies and they will be hosted very soon so you'll be having both the uh, previous land use land cover and present land use land cover even for uh, change detection and other things you can very nicely use this database so this is uh, one such example area under cultivation how it has grown or shrunk so in different places what are the observations uh, we are uh, trying to provide this so that uh, hotspots can be identified similarly water resources development plan and the land resources development plan all these are available which are made uh, um, earlier and also present Present, we are trying to give tools with which you can run your own LRDP and WRDP. So this module is already made on us, but it will be made live very soon uh, for users, wherein they can give their own uh, weightages and then uh, run the model. So we have uh, prepared a model and kept, and uh, as per your uh, information availability uh, and um, your methodologies, you can also prepare your own LRDP, WRDP plans. So overall, it looks uh, somewhat like this. So once uh, plans are in place, you can... Uh, Go in for, uh, suppose, say, check dam uh, locations. So, based on the criteria, what we follow uh, for remote sensing applications. So, some of you might be aware uh, how uh, meticulously these are uh, designed based on the available resources like dry drainage map, LULC, soil texture. Many things go into it. But finally, once these data is available overlaid on each other, it becomes easy for planning. Uh, specially. So this is how um, you can uh, do check dams and all. So cadastral, as I told you, some of the places it is available and we try to match uh, with respect to but it is also about the infrastructure available in the state and what are the assets available in those villages uh, whether they are really having everything uh, um, immediately like schools or together we call it as a gram panchayat development index so based on this index we are ranking each of the uh, blocks and then uh, trying to tell them like uh, is this block very much developed underdeveloped or uh, very poor etc and so that um, uh, the respective authorities can take and so that um, uh, the respective have done for entire india but uh, as of now uh, in uh, many Mm, uh, gram panchayats we have done uh, some survey along with the help of partner institutions from uh, different places so one such exercise uh, here what i'm uh, trying to show you is household survey during covid also there was a uh, no um, impediment uh, for uh, doing this because we developed a mobile application simply asking clicking so all the information was uh, collected around the uh, 7500 records were collected to show in 34 gram panchayats how this can actually implement and make a change so based on that we have uh, shown how different gap analysis can be done it's not what is available there because what is available there most of the people know but what is not available is important for uh, going as input into a development planning process so these uh, things we have done and given and uh, overall, all this information, whenever we collect from ground or from space-based, we try to put in our portal, which is called Bone Panchayat. So the main aim is...
uh, visualization, query and analysis, and also planning. So all this is available online. You can go into Bhuvan and Panchayat at uh, nrsc.go.in. So that uh, URL and all will be sharing with you. So finally, the main um, GPDPA process um, is uh, this. So we are trying to address different phases. One is suggestion phase, uh, wherein a region will be selected. So we try to do some profiling. These tools are available. Once it is done, as per the RADFI guidelines, uh, we um, uh, run some queries and see uh, where the GPDPA stands. So based on that, uh, we go into planning phase. So once we know that uh, some intervention is required in this uh, village or panchayat, then we uh, go ahead and uh, the planning phase will start. So once it is done, we can uh, share the uh, approval plan with uh, other authorities or whoever is implementing. And then it goes into next phase of implementation, which is, of course, um, beyond the portal tools and all. So to this phase, that is up to planning and approval phase, we try to give the information and which can be downloaded as reports and then later on used. So overall modular flow for those who want to uh, just explore our Bhuvan uh, Panchayat and uh, also uh, if at all uh, you have some suggestions for improvements or addition of information, you can please uh, come back to us. So finally, we have uh, query modules, area profiling modules. You can download profile reports, plan an activity, and different natural resource layers one by one you can see. Uh, and uh, very important is you cannot download this data. Though this data we are sharing with uh, different government departments, case by case basis, uh, wherever the request is coming for some uh, planning activity, which is either connected to state or center. So that we are doing, if at all you require, you can always mail it to director and also to us. So that based on the requirement, we are sharing till the time geospatial policy comes. Once it comes, all this data will be free and we'll be providing it for downloads. So one such exercise anyway, we'll be showing in demonstration also. Just to give you an overview, here uh, you can select anything. For example, here, Water Resource Development Band in Telangana, uh, Nalgunda. You can uh, select your area and uh, check the profile. And then uh, later on, you can uh, compute, so for example, groundwater. So you can compute uh, GPDPI. And then uh, uh, suppose somebody wants to do some water structures, he can select and start planning. So once this is done, um, some uh, kind of suggestions will come up. And uh, you can also start drawing where you want to intervene. And uh, this information will be shared in your report, uh, which you can uh, share with the implementation authorities. And then empowering Panchayat Raj institutions, we took up a sub-activity of this entire process, around 10% of the country. Because uh, putting information on site is one part, but actually taking it to the ground level, through for entire country is a very massive exercise which cannot be done by one or two institutions so taking the help of a panchayat raj and many other um, academia and line departments 10 percent of the country we've shown how actually this can be done so a lot of uh, asset mapping has been done using our mobile applications this data we have collected on site even today in uh, uttar pradesh uh, uttarakhand and all uh, some of the people are uh, still uploading the data which we are continuously getting it so based on which uh, the entire activity uh, based on gap analysis we can plan so such exercise has been done and uh, later we want to take it to entire country in much faster way so uh, Gram Panchayat Spatial Development Plans, uh, yes, as I told you, all the activity planning exercises has been done. And uh, we also have developed uh, from our own side, uh, most of the plans for important uh, hotspot areas and uh, shade. And 34 Gram Panchayats have been done in total. Uh, so entire analysis has been done on all these reports are available online as uh, PDFs. So you can also download. And those which need to be done, uh, we have uh, started with the latest data. And uh, yeah. These are the different kinds of reports you get. Uh, this is the area profiling report uh, from Bhuvan Panchayat. So different activities are there in that. So for example, weather reports are there, land use and cover reports are there. Then uh, you have administrative boundaries, so all that. And uh, your planning, if somebody has done a planning, that also comes here as a report. So here in um, Buntu district, one small exercise where we did uh, gap analysis for health centers based on RADFI guidelines. From um, within uh, 2.5 to 5 kilometers, uh, if I'm uh, running a query where all uh, hospitals are available, so it will tell us where it is available, primary health center, secondary health center. So these uh, queries can be done. So based on settlements. So these are all the settlements where they are there and how far they are there from the uh, nearest hospital. So based on that, if at all required, we can plan in some other place. And uh, similarly, the routes wherever available uh, with us from our uh, road infrastructure we are uh, showing the routes and uh, 
giving the gap analysis. So similarly for uh, education facilities, for example, if you see here, uh, what are all the existing primary schools and uh, where are the settlements? So based on that uh, findings we give, so in Panchayat where the children are have to travel more than two, three kilometers. So this um, primary health center, they have uh, some guidelines. So these two um, settlements, uh, they require immediate attention or uh, some new school, if at all it is coming in this area, somebody planned, so they have to plan in the nearest area. Similarly, drainage systems. So we have given DEM and all other places. You can see high elevation is there, low elevation is there. If at all, um, the rainwater which is uh, running through, so that model is also available. Where in runoff and all we are calculating. Based on that, if you uh, start uh, creating a structure which is connecting to the nearest drainage, so the water can easily go here. So and with the shortest path. So that uh, analysis has been done. And uh, so nearest stream from the settlement. So that's where we have to connect. And similarly, banks and post offices. So infrastructure planning also can be done. And uh, all these um, uh, things can be given through the query module. And uh, plan and activity. As I told you, the DPD, of course, this is very scientific and now all running in background based on indices. But finally, uh, to the end user, we will not take through this. So this is all background but uh, we'll be giving them ranks. So each rank is having a naming convention. For example, developed, highly developed, underdeveloped, etc. like that. So based on those, uh, we'll be giving priority and uh, uh, while implementing, they can use that priority for implementation. So similarly, Kacha houses, as I told you, uh, through mobile application, we have collected data and those those data once we overlay, it is very clear cut visible. So where all kacha houses are there, paka houses are there, where uh, new uh, areas have to come up. Uh, so uh, this is a report uh, for availability of toilets. So under uh, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan and many other places, this kind of data is very, very important. And uh, mobile application for household survey, it almost 175 attributes we have collected. So whatever I'm showing is one or two samples. But uh, if I dig down into each of the reports, there will be multiple. So based on the activity requirement, uh, we can uh, use this data. But the data, as I told you, is only for those areas in which it is collected. So now it is uh, uh, supposed to go for uh, entire country. Now, this is a household information system. And uh, the data we are sharing for uh, many, many big uh, uh, social and uh, national mission schemes and uh, many other places. If at all you belong to some department, which is a state government or central government, or even NGO, you can please write to us uh, based on the priority and uh, implementation uh, requirements. We can always share some data. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, my colleague, Ramya, will uh, take you through the portal. Any questions for me on this? Okay, I'll ask uh, Ramya to um, share this uh, uh, yeah. bone panchayat. Sir, uh, you're there, sir? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Able to hear me, Harish? Yeah, you are, I'm able to hear you, sir. Uh, like uh, some two questions are there that probably you can take up now. Yeah, please. Yeah, this is like whatever the drainage network that you have shown in one of the slides. Uh, so are we yeah. doing that mapping, sir, of the drainage network or are we... Yeah, drainage network is already there and we are also uh, improving it based on the latest available satellite data. It is available, yes. But the mapping we have done or we are getting it uh, from other sources? No, we, it's from uh, NNRMS, uh, this uh, project sponsorship is going along with the state partner institutions. So all of them have mapped for each of the states and entire data is available with us. Okay, sir. There's a question, like, what are the parameters to calculate GPDI? GPDI. Okay. So we have taken uh, education, health, uh, natural resources, and um, uh, other information uh, which is coming from assets and all. So all the four are there. So we call it as NRI, HFI, and uh, EFI, so economic conditions. 
and the social condition. So all the four parameters. Anyway, if somebody is interested, I'll uh, share these slides also. In that slide, it is very clearly written, including the flow, how it is uh, to be calculated. Overall, GPDA, how we are calculating is, it is fourth root of a product of all the four indices. The, that is education, social, economic, national resources, and health. So all these four we have taken into consideration. But um, this question um, is for knowing, or you require some more in-depth information? Uh, it does come in chat, sir. Probably like he wants to know like what are the parameters. Okay. So now that you have mentioned it is already available in the slides. Uh, we'll make sure that yeah, uh, once it has come, I'm sure the chat. person may be looking to have more information and uh, detailed information of what goes into health, what goes into socioeconomic is also very important. Probably that is a contest in which they asked. We'll be very happy to share our uh, information of our slides and also document if required. So they can write to us and we can share the information. It is quite uh, detailed actually. Yeah. So now we'll uh, start this uh, demo of Pool Panchayat. Yeah, sure, sir. Uh, but before uh, uh, Dear uh, participants, I think we are experiencing a lot of bandwidth fluctuations, uh, both internal and as well as in the broadcast uh, uh, channel. So kindly stay put, kindly bear with us, uh, because uh, as you are aware, like uh, there are uh, it is raining continuously in this uh, part of the region. So uh, there is going to be some fluctuations. So kindly stay put and uh, bear with us uh, with these fluctuations. Anyway, they are uh, not continuous. Intermittently, they are affecting our uh, uh, sessions. So this is for your information. And sir, uh, uh, it's over to you for your next step part. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, this is Ramya. Can you uh, able to view my screen? Not yet, madam. So I think it is sharing, uh, showing, starting to share, but uh, still no uh, view of the PPT. Okay, I'll try to reshare it once. Is it visible now, sir? Uh, Harish sir, is it visible now? Uh, not yet, madam. So I was just waiting uh, so that your uh, PPT is visible. But at the That's moment, no. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me know once it is visible. You are giving a PPT, madam, or you are, uh, try, I mean, showing some uh, demo or a tutorial? I'm showing a demo. I'm sharing demo. my Google Chrome. Uh, uh, it's not PPT. I'll be uh, giving the demo on the uh, live URL, live portal. From where you are uh, giving this, P I mean, uh, demo, madam? Uh, within Balanagar or uh, Shadnagar? It's from Balnagar. Just now, sh uh, sir shared the PPT, right? From the same system I'm giving. But you are able to see, well, I mean, uh, of course, you will get to see whatever you're sharing, but... Uh, yeah. 
we are not able to see the slide i mean the screen that you are trying to share it is coming as a started to share content but so far no view of the screen So I have reshared it again. Still, it is the same or any progress? No, it is still the same, madam. So probably we have to. Okay, we'll wait for a few seconds. See whether it will turn up. So I could have see access. this shared thing uh, popping out. Probably if you have access to any other workstation or a laptop, uh, will it be possible for you to demo it from that system? Uh, no, because this issue of uh, the uh, slide share and also some interruptions in the voice where... Uh,
सर आई एम सविता एम आई ऑडिबल सर यस मैडम यू आर ऑडिबल ओके ओके सर ओके सो दिस इज अ लेजेंड डायनेमिक kindly do it uh, quickly no two so minutes we'll only take yours. Than that. sure sure so we'll we, we'll be there in the meeting only so kindly uh, yeah. you can log in from your system and we'll take uh, ramya's uh, yeah, sir, sure. okay sir thank you sir so dear users uh, dear participants uh, we regret uh, the inconvenience uh, because of the bandwidth fluctuations so kindly uh, stay put uh, we will we'll resume shortly so we'll take now the uh, tutorials on bhuvan features and usage that will be given by uh, ms savita so she is connecting to the uh, session very soon so we'll take that particular uh, tutorials and then we'll uh, continue with the uh, one panchayat demo after that class hello sir am i audible yes madam yes sir i am ready with my material sir uh, shall i start yeah please go ahead madam yeah i am savita from bhuvan and good afternoon everyone uh i hope from all the previous lectures everyone got some good overview about uh, bhuvan platform and now i think everyone are connected with bhuvan uh in this guided tutorial we will be performing some simple exercises so that at individual level we can deal with the two aspects of bhuvan that i'm going to share you now yeah they are contribute and consume uh in the first aspect is contribute which is more related to the crowdsourcing where we can add your special information in bhuvan platform in this aspect we will mainly see bhuvan tools and bhuvan mapper application madam sir, sorry we... to interrupt are you sharing yes. your uh, screen yes sir i have one second sir yeah i'm i'm just sharing now
Uh, is it visible, sir? Yes, madam. Please go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, shall I start? Can start and uh, put it in that uh, uh, presentation mode. Yeah, I have already put it, sir. Is it now in presentation mode, sir? Yes, madam. Please go ahead. Yeah. So, in this, uh, two aspects are there. One is contribute and another one is consume. In contribute, we will be learning about Bhuvan tools, Bhuvan mapper and all other mobile applications. In this aspect, we will mainly see Bhuvan tools and Bhuvan mapper where we can add point of interest information in Bhuvan environment. We also... Yeah. We also have mobile application called Bhuvan POI, which I'm not con uh, covering in this session, but this application can also be used for POI information contribution. And the second aspect is consume. In Bhuvan, we have hundreds of products and thousand plus OGC services. How these products and services we can consume for planning, analysis, and other GIS data generation activities, we'll see here. For products, we will go to the Open Data Archive and for services, uh, we will perform ex um, exercise from the thematic services from Bhuvan. Uh, this uh, I will just show you in the demo mode. I am just uh, showing you in the PPT format. What all I am just uh, telling you, these are all covering in the demo. So this will be uh, shown to you in five minutes. Uh, now we will consume these products and services in desktop GS uh, clients like QGS, which is free and open source. And in same way, it can be used in other GS clients like ArcGIS and Eldas also. Uh, another application uh, which we will be talking about in this session is also Bhuvan Suvida. Uh, this will be uh, detailed uh, given explanation about Bhuvan Suvida by our next colleague. And one more thing here, I will show you one by one live and you need not write or you need not uh, got it onto anything. Uh, I will be giving everything in a, a predefined form format of a PPT. So this is a, a defined format of PPT. So... So from here, I will take you to the uh, live demo of uh, Bhuvan Guided Tutorial. Now we'll go to Bhuvan. Yeah, I think uh, uh, till now you all uh, might have got some knowledge about the Bhuvan homepage and web page. Sir, is this uh, Bhuvan homepage uh, visible to everyone? Uh, no, madam. Probably you have to unshare, unshare your PPT and you have to share uh, the other screen. Yeah, yeah. One second, sir. One second. Sir, is it visible now? Now it is visible, madam. Please. Yeah, uh, this is the homepage of our Bhuvan. And from here, uh, now I will uh, now take you to the Bhuvan Mapper tool, which is right here. You can just click on the service. Yeah. For our convenience and for our authentication, Bhuvan is providing a username and password for uh, all the registered users. So uh, we need to log in before doing uh, anything on the Bhuvan Mapper, which is a tool where you can uh, digitize your own uh, shape files and you can use your uh, own digitized polygons, points, lines, and for other things for your own purpose.
due to some network issues we are facing very low bandwidth so be aware with us So before it comes, uh, we'll try to explore Bhuvan tools. Yeah, before we use uh, Bhuvan tools, um, Bhuvan tools are visible here in the Bhuvan 2D uh, web page. There you can go straight away like this. And here you can see there is an option called Add Photos or POI Add Panorama. So uh, likewise, I have shown you in my PPT. Uh, here you can add your photos or your POI data or you can add your panoramic views. This is in a set. Uh, this is in the map mode. I will uh, take you to the satellite mode. So I'm removing the cadastral boundary and one boundary. Uh, you might be well aware in the overview mode, uh, one will be visible in the full resolution of uh, not overview mode of AVIPS. Now, once if you pan into the further zoom levels, it will take you to the higher and higher resolutions of uh, satellite data. Now this is where we are in Hyderabad. So if we can uh, and and we can zoom to add a photo or PY data, simply you just click on that. Then it will ask you to uh, log in with the credentials. So once you enter your credentials, it will give a pop-up window like this. Here it will ask you to add point by clicking on terrain at any desired location. Wherever if you want to add or if you want to click on particular area, just zoom into particular location. For example, it's a park in uh, nearby our uh, Sensagar. Just click here. Straight away, it will uh, take the latitude and longitude from that uh, application and it will ask you for the category. I have selected the category park and now subject. It's subject purely depends upon uh, your matter. Like I, I'm giving a subject as the same park and remarks. Adding UI info. So likewise, you can even choose a, a, a photograph of it. If you have any photographs, you can simply choose the photograph and you can simply add.
Yeah, this will be visible uh, once the content will be available for the public uses. Once it is get is okay. it gets validated by the server. So likewise, you can add your pictures and you can add any PUI data and likewise you can add a panorama also. Like uh, same way, you just go to any particular place. If you have any vision or uh, video of any particular thing or long view, simply click on that one and select the category monuments, buildings, institutions, whatever. If whatever that uh, panoramic view that you have, you can simply give some description, you can upload and the same content will be visible to the public once if it gets validated. Uh, this is regarding the tools that we can add in the uh, 2D image. Then now uh, we'll go to the Bhuvan Mapper. This is the home page of our Bhuvan Mapper where it allows the user to create a point, like uh, to create a polygons of points, maybe it may be points, lines or area. So it uh, depends upon purely your uh, area of interest where we would like to digitize our own area. It depends upon our study area. So the polygons which you are seeing here uh, are previously digitized polygons and if you want to digitize any of these areas of your own interest, see, you can uh, use a point, line or area. Now I am taking here an area option and I am trying to digitize this stadium. So after digitizing, if you find anything wrong or if you want to delete something, uh, what is or if you, are, if you want to delete a polygon itself, here it gives you an option called delete option. So after digitizing this, you can save it. Here it, you can save this. Options level, right? So here it uh, gives so uh, many categories like uh, land use, building, park, water, hospital places. Like so many are available here. So I am just uh, selecting this category into a park because it's a stadium. I'm just giving a common name like a stadium. And whatever, if you want to add some tags. 
leisure, like park, whatever it is, you can simply add it and you just save this one. Once if it is saved, it will be shown in this color, like it's, it, show, it shows in a green color. Likewise, you can digitize a polygon or uh, if you want to go with, uh, after digitizing this, make a download option, yes. oh, yeah. so likewise, select the theme here it gives all thematic information which are available in our bhuvan likewise like land use land cover of 50k to 50k 10k of different years like 2005 5 and 6 of 50k and for every five years we will be providing this 50k topo sheet for entire land use land cover of india so here i am just trying to take a lulc of 50k of 2015 and 16 and i just wanted to check it out how it looks in the year 15-16 for it, it provides in the form of each and every uh, single state. So state wise you can have the statistics. Here I am selecting um, Telangana state and here you can even have the technical document. If you click on this one it will uh, give the technical document regarding 2015-16 LULC. Uh, it is taking some time. So like this, uh, you can see the entire information regarding that, that particular document. After selecting that, you can simply click on view. Uh, it will show the entire uh, Telangana state uh, LULC. You can even have a map look, you can download it, you can download the statistics also. And after that, you can even zoom to a particular district level. Here it shows all the districts that are available in Telangana state. Uh, I am just uh, checking this Karimnagar. So in this uh, Bhuvan Consume, uh, we can uh, take these services uh, into a web service. Like after that, you just uh, simply click on web services. It will give you the particular URL, like WMS service location. Simply copy that particular location. And these services can be used in QGS, uh, like I already told you, QGS, EDAS, or in ArcGIS. I'm just opening the same thing. Here, you can simply go to that layer. Add layer here it gives you plenty of uh, 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 layer options in this we have to select uh, WMS or WMTS layer then here you just go to some new give some name I am just giving LULC I am giving the URL here and OK now connect So after connecting, it shows all the data sets that are available in, in this particular WMS uh, service. So we can click on any of these things and we can simply add that layer in our QGIS. So it's taking some time. 
so like this in one consume we can even take the services as a web services and we can use that services uh, for our uh, academic purposes and for our developmental purposes then i will just uh, show some uh, handful experience of uh, qgs how we can add a vector layer or a raster layer in qgs how we can create our own uh, uh, shape file in qgs uh, that will be taken yeah so the service which i have taken that wasteland one uh, mp ka wasteland services uh, that has uh, shown here so like this you can take a wms services from one and you can use that service into your qgs or rgs now i will take you uh, some new project so here uh, we can create a new vector layer we can create a new uh, raster layer we can create um, and we can add all the different types of layers see if you have Uh, if you go to add layer it will give you so many like plenty of options like vector layer raster layer post js layer like this so now we'll see how we can add a raster layer in qgs see i am having uh, some uh, pre uh, selected data sets with me i am just showing those data sets so this is a raster data which i'm having right now with me so whatever the data uh, size may be or uh, the type of the resolution you can simply add the raster layer in this pattern in same way you can add uh, a vector layer also add layer add vector layer now it will ask you the location then you just go to that particular location so i'm just taking the boundary india boundary and along with this islands like this uh, we can add our own vector layers now i will show you how we can create a vector layer here layer create layer and you need to select new shape file layer then it will ask you point like a shape file of what uh, sort of uh, information like it is a point it is a line or polygon type what sort of shape file you wanted to create so here i am selecting a polygon and here it is uh, uh, giving the information like what sort of file system it is uh, uh, taking i am taking this uh, default thing now i will give some name to that shape file um, so this is our uh, latest shape file which is created by us now it is not having any uh, shape or line or point of interest data after uh, creating a shape file name we need to uh, take this layer under editing mode so here there is an option called toggle editing it will allow you to drop polygons or add features whatever is there like this you can add a polygon and for this you need to give some attributes so if you want to see what sort of attributes that you have given just click on that shape file go to open attribute option then it will show you what is that id of its uh, polygon i have given one so that it, it is showing that one then later after this i just wanted to create a shape file of poi means uh, like points points uh, the same way just go to the layer create new shape uh, shape file layer then select the point then select the name likewise just check it check this one 
and go to the toggle editing option. Um, no, uh, now it will ask you because we have taken uh, points, it will ask us to add some points. Like for this, we need to give some ID name and then two and then three. Like this, wherever we, we wanted to give some point of interest information or wherever we want to show some uh, uh, PY data, we can use these points. If you have any uh, information regarding to the roads or rivers, if you want to digitize those bunds, we can take the same way as we can take add layer, create new shape file and choose line option. And here you can uh, select the same thing and you can even there is an op option called add field here you can before digitizing the polygon or po line or point we can have our own number of fields that we can add to the shape file here i am just giving point field of text type and length is 80 and add this field to the table fields list again i am giving name of text type length is of 80 add to fields list likewise and number of fields can be added to your shape file and these uh, these uh, these attributes or information will be utilized for us for later purpose like this i have taken point field point name like that no i i'll just uh, take it the point only and just so I'm just removing means disabling these two. I'm just checking this one and I'm giving the toggle edit option here it again uh, showing me the add features like add polygons here it is asking the ID because we have not given any ID there and point field it is asking it is 22 I'm just uh, randomly I'm giving and point name I am giving it's like name you can uh, because it is a point now we can give what sort of name if you want you can give it to this and okay then again take another one it will ask you the again id point field i am giving 33 and point name i am giving hospital yeah likewise you can take n number of points and you can create your own uh, shape files after creating this Simply, we need to save this one. So once if you save this one, it will uh, uh, save the same uh, attributes and everything. Or else you can click on that uh, shape file and simply you can save as. There is an option called save as. Again, it will ask you the location where you wanted to uh, save this. And with uh, some different name also you can save for editing purpose. And all these uh, projection information and the vertices, everything will be default. It will save you. So after saving this, you can see like this, just click on that one, open attribute table. These are the fields that we have already created while creating the uh, shape file. This ID I have given randomly and point field and point name. Like this, we can create our own vector file and we can create, uh, we can add our raster files and we can add vector files in the QGIS and we can use this QGIS as our uh, uh, so like a course of package so uh, these are the different services uh, that we are providing under Bhuvan uh, uh, guided tutor open guided tutorial uh, so I think uh, uh, I'm done from my answer any doubts are there you can please ask me hello yeah yes madam yes sir uh, I am just uh, done with this. Yeah, thank you, madam, for uh, your uh, uh, live demo.
I think there are uh, two questions uh, that uh, probably. Uh, these are the uh, one second, sir. These are the PPT that uh, we'll be sharing to you, and what all the steps that I have shown in my demo. Those are all available step by step in detail uh, for all the uh, users. You can simply go through this PPT. So, is it PPT uh, visible to you, sir? A visible, man. Yeah, likewise, uh, like how I have shown this, the Bhuvan mapper, uh, how we can digitize as a area like this. I have already uh, shown you all the demo because why I have not shown uh, shown this Bhuvan data archive in Noida because in the morning session. Uh, one of our colleagues, uh, he already explained regarding this uh, NOIDA, so that's the reason I didn't uh, touch this one. And this is like thematic services uh, in which we can uh, use all our services as a web services. This also I have shown you in demo. So these are all the steps. If uh, any new users or any uh, person who is not not aware of this QGS or Bhuvan services, how we can use in QGS as a web uh, WMS service, uh, these are all the uh, steps that I have shown you. So. Please uh, work together, learn together, and grow together. Thank you. Thank yes. you, madam. Yeah. 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 So, question is there? The, can we upload the three D view of the three uh, D view of the area in the Bhuvan Geo portal? Yes, sir. We can upload, sir. Uh, likewise, how I have shown in Bhuvan tools now, there is an option called uh, upload uh, panoramic view also is there, images also there. I have already shown you, Nasser, we can upload once if it gets validated by the server, it will show to the public. Yeah, we have all what is the, yeah. Yes, sir. So what is the frequency of updation of uh, images or the satellite images in the Bhuvan 2D? Uh, Bhuvan 2D, sir, actually, as per our ISRO policy, uh, for uh, visualization, we will be uploading one year old data, sir. We, uh, after, uh, at the end of 2022, uh, we will be uploading 2021 of uh, high resolution uh, of uh, entire India. And for uh, downloading, uh, we will be providing two years old data, like uh, for uh, list 3 AVIPs under NOIDA. Like uh, NRSC Open Earth Data Archival, we will be providing two years old data of 5 meters and 24 meters, uh, 24 meters and 50 meters resolution data for free of cost. Fine, madam. Actually, the, those are the questions uh, that uh, I can pick up from the chat. Yeah. Uh, any further questions, uh, dear participants? You can uh, kindly. Uh, Post it in the chat box. So, uh, I couldn't see any um, messages in the chat box. So whatever is there, you just uh, convey to me. If uh, sure, madam. yeah, no, not not the uh, Webex chat box, but on the uh, YouTube yeah, live chat. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Sir. Okay then, so if uh, there are no more questions uh, from the participants, uh, we will uh, conclude the day two session here. Yeah, to... So we will... Um, yeah, so what the one demo on the Bhuvan Panchayat uh, uh, is due uh, from this uh, particular session. So that we'll, uh, we'll try to take up in tomorrow's or accommodate in tomorrow's uh, session and we'll try to complete that one. Um, so as I've been uh, put it in, putting in chat and also announcing uh, that we are facing a lot of uh, bandwidth fluctuations. So that is the reason we are not able to uh, do a proper uh, a webinar session today and uh, we are already uh, on it to we are trying to resolve that uh, so that we will not have issues uh, in the, the upcoming session also so we regret the uh, inconvenience uh, that you may have faced uh, uh, during today's sessions uh, but we are we are on it uh, we can quickly resolve uh, to see that uh, it doesn't uh, 
uh, happen. So with that, uh, uh, dear uh, participants, uh, we come to the end of day two session. So once again, thank you for your uh, valuable time and presence uh, in this webinar and also uh, for uh, interacting with us uh, on the various uh, questions that you may want to know from this particular uh, webinar session. So I hope uh, we were uh, able to answer uh, whatever the questions, uh, queries you had related to uh, some of the uh, topics or the concepts that were discussed today. But still, if you want to clarify further, uh, we are again, uh, uh, you are welcome. Uh, we are open to it. So we can kindly put it in the chat box or you can communicate uh, to us uh, by mail. So we will definitely, we'll try to uh, answer your queries uh, and uh, uh, give our support whatever best is possible. Yeah, the PPTs, uh, whatever uh, that are covered during the session will be uploaded in the uh, same uh, e-class, e uh, but by the end of this uh, uh, webinar. So we are uh, making plans to upload all the presentations that were covered. So you can check that on, in your uh, personal account uh, with the e-class uh, platform. And uh, the today's quiz also will be uh, enabled by 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So kindly watch out for that uh, uh, message. Hello. Sir, sorry to interrupt you, sir. So this is Ramya of Namasi. Okay. Yeah, so. So, so uh, can we check today once uh, on the demo? No, if you are ready, you can uh, probably you can share your screen. And uh, if it uh, if it yeah. is going well, we'll do it today. Otherwise, we'll do it tomorrow. So kindly share your screen. We'll we'll find out whether we can continue with that. Okay, okay, sir. I'm I'll be I'm sharing my screen. Is it visible, sir? Now. Yeah, now it is visible, madam. Okay. Can I go ahead with the presentation? Yeah, you can go ahead. Uh. Yes, sir. So, good afternoon. Uh, this is the portal for Bhuvan Panchayat, and you can access this portal using the uh, this URL. This is Bhuvan hyphen Panchayat three dot nrc dot gov dot in. So, basically, it is a single page application, built and developed using all the latest technologies. So here it has a four sections. One is of header and the footer. And, and uh, to the left, there is an accordion section. And to the right, there is a map section, as you can see. So coming to the header section, here we have uh, this title. And some uh, geospatial uh, tools, such as navigation, measurement. And in this navigation, one can uh, just zoom into the desired area and coming to the measurement, one can uh, measure the length of the desired area or also the uh, area, how much it has uh, occupied. So uh, going on to this, even this portal can be viewed in eight different languages, uh, such as, and this all is developed using our own database, but not a Google translator. So coming back to English again, and also we have given this uh, uh, provision of normal view and a full view. And this full view is for the better vision and uh, user experience. Uh, this is a, a one feature which we have provided here. So coming back to the normal view and uh, there is also a login uh, log, login thing. And one can, uh, one can uh, the registered users can log in using this uh, particular section. So, and coming to the footer, here we have given the number of visitors and also some list of terms and conditions and disclaimer and such details are given in the footer. And coming back to this, to the right, as you can see the map section, here we have given the zoom in and zoom out features, the scale bars for the easily accessible and also at the bottom there is an icon present where one can easily switch on the satellite layer on and off 
so easily uh, one can switch off and switch on and to the uh, top right corner here we can uh, there is a legend box here this is a dynamic legend we have given uh, and these legend will be um, ab uh, able uh, will be enabled when whenever has as you can see the layer section module whichever the layers are switched on in this layer module all all uh, those uh, layer details will be given here so and coming to this there is an over map overview map is also given so that one can get an easy view of with uh, of the position where they are exactly in so this all the things in the map section and i'm switching off now coming to the accordion section to the left as you can see these are the list of modules which are present in this portal and uh, these uh, with the help of these module the decentralized planning can be done and also the better visualization uh, is provided so the main mo module is the area selection here area selection can be done you uh, by two mo uh, two modes one is by uh, getting into the administrative boundaries and also there is a feature has search uh, well uh, for using uh, for accessing this search we have to select particular state which one ha uh, one wants to search any particular child they can just type down uh, type the uh, type down the place where they want to uh search and based on that our database will be given and it just pops out and gives you the location in the andhra pradesh here the place hot beta is present so uh this is how search works and if one and we can also there is a clear option given and if one wants to come has per the administrative search uh we can go and directly select the administrative level wise and can zoom into the particular region so there is an ground based an analysis done by our team uh, in a particular panchayat that is kompalle which is in telangana state in nalgonda district of uh, munugode block and the uh, panchayat name is kompalle so i'll be going into this i'll i'll be uh, setting my, this as my area of interest and i'll be submitting it and so this is the thing here this is kompalle panchayat now coming to the layers module here we can switch on the satellite imagery here as well and also the administrative layers like district boundaries block boundaries panchayat everything is given and also we have a provision for the parliament and assembly boundaries as well and uh, coming to the infrastructure things we have uh, a rail and road maps available and the hydrological layers are also available i'll be switching off the satellite layer so that you can clearly view and coming to the thematic uh, databases we have lulc land use land car and the uh, slope slope map so as you can see here uh i have over uh, overlaid two layers at a time and if one wants to compare one layer with the other layer there are few options given over here such as swipe so one can just swipe down and uh, compare the compare the layers and also the transparency uh, can also be set using this and also the zoom uh, levels can be set and uh, i am also so switching on the drainage layer as you can see as i said uh, th this is a dynamic legend so i have switched on all these layers i have switched on all the administrative layers the infrastructure layers and the hydrology layers so accordingly we have got all those uh, legends as you can see this uh, green represents level to nearly level as of the slope map and also Uh, I have switched on the drainage layer, so river and stream are given. So accordingly, like now I have switched on the settlement layer. If I have just refresh it, as I said, it is dynamic. It will be giving the uh, village legend. So uh, getting back, I am switching off all the layers.
uh, I'll be keeping the slope for an instance for uh, understanding layer details. Okay, there is a, a list of assets has uh, previously shown in the PPT and said that uh, based on the IPRIS project, uh, using our own mobile map, we have geotagged some assets and uh, those uh, are categorized into 64 different categories and all those uh, individual layers can be popped out and overlaid uh, on our uh, map section us uh, using this portal. For an example, I'll just overlay the schools here. So you can just select the school, go to assets and also you, you have a provision of getting the count here. Now I'm just overlaying the assets. So as you can see, these are the schools and in the legend also you, it will be available for better understanding. So this is the thing. Mm, coming back to profile so this profile section consists of three different layers one is region profile gram panchayat profile and population these three layers were derived by uh, uh, sysdp database and also in uh, view of uh, RAD, radfi guidelines we have given this population layer once i switch on the population layer you can see whether uh, this particular region is lying and eligible for RAD, RAD PF gu guidelines or not. And also like Gram Pranchayat profile gives us a, a detail such as uh, urban whether the particular region li lies under interior village, urban fringe or so on. Like uh, such kind of categorization is done. Village, urban fringe or so this yellow represents the interior village and here uh, gives us whether the region is plain, coastal or hilly. So this uh, particular uh, region belongs to plain region. If I go to the other extent, you can just go uh, uh, experience the other layers as well. So yeah, now coming to the layer details module here whatever the layers we switched on in this layer section all the uh, details of such layers will so we click on on the map section of our particular locations for suppose i want to know whatever the uh, uh, the details about this particular location which i have just clicked on so whatever the layers which are switched on in layer section all those details will be in the form here in layer section and in the form of table form here. It is of Telangana state, district is Nalgonda, of uh, Munugode, Aluk, of Kumpale Panchayat. In that particular uh, instance, I, there is no road present there. Now I'll be clicking on here on the road map. Now you can get the details of road as well. <laughs> So previously there was no road uh, where uh, at, uh, at the particular location which I have just uh, clicked on. Now I have clicked on the road. So those details will be given and it lies under uh, Krishna Basin and sub basin is of Krishna Lower and watershed of this code and slope is uh, level, level to near region is of plain region. Such all kind of details will be given us using this layer details. For understanding the next modules, I'll be switching off the layers which I have switched on. So yeah, now the next module is query module here one uh, the area selection of area is mandatory otherwise we can't uh, uh, so now already the area is selected uh, it is of Kumpale Panchayat. Now, using this module, one can query out, uh, query into our database of these particular layers, such as thematic layers, the hydrology layers, and also the infrastructure layers, and 
all the 64 categories SS1 can just query into our da uh, database as per their user in interest. So I'll be showing an uh, example of LULC. So I just want to know the LULC uh, of this particular uh, uh, panchayat uh, of this particular panchayat so i'm in the attribute attributes has classes and we have uh, there is a provision uh, of equal to and not equal to operator so i'm going for equal to operator and i just want to search how much of cropland is present in this particular area so i'm just moving on to this and on click of submit so the this particular region is of cropland and similarly we can go for not equal to and see what else other features which are other than cropland present in this region so for that if you give a not equal to cropland so whatever all the other lulc classes particular region will be popped out popped out here so that we can better analyze and plan our any planning can be done based on it in a very uh, focused manner so these are the regions which are uh, these are the categories which are present other than cropland actually on click of this we can just pop it out and overlay those on the map as well so it's, it's taking a bit of time because of uh, there are like multiple uh, categories present in this particular area so the uh, on click of show measurement will be ge uh, getting the area in square meters uh, so this area represents the uh, like the amount of area which is other than cropland okay like uh, I'll be querying out other thing village okay now other uh, so as you can see other than village all the other area uh, all the other lulc features are visible over here as you can see previously we have uh, queried uh, cropland uh, now other than village everything uh, is present along with the cropland so on the measurement so this is the area which is present uh, in this uh, Kompale Panchayat other, other than village so all these uh, legends are uh, all, all these uh, features are GIF uh, uh, bar chart so as you can see the most uh, accumulated uh, region is cropland in this particular area so this kind of analysis can be done using this uh, query feature now getting back to the other uh, other module it is area profile so this area profile is uh, divided into three subsections that is overview census and activities here in the overview all the area details will be given such as of which uh, selected areas and the geographical area how much it consumes and the number of villages and also LULC uh, information with the help of the graphical and pie charts and we are working on the legend and coming to this overview there are also weather details present in this weather uh, details we are giving uh, temperature and rainfall informations and the temperature consists of 19 uh, is uh, available for 1985 to 2015 uh, time frame and for rainfall we have also the updated list till to, uh, from 1985 to 2021 so i'll be uh, showing you the rainfall thing for frequency i'll be selecting the annual and a period of uh, from 2015 to 2021 i want to just check the annual rain uh, the graph of the annual uh, rainfall for this particular panchayat so this will be given in the form of uh, pictorial uh, representations such as bar charts and uh, line ch uh, line charts so we'll be getting all those details on the click of show show chart one can easily view uh, like in 2015 there is of 588 mm rainfall in 2000 uh, 
in 2020 there is maximum of uh, rainfall and that is the highest they have experienced and also we are giving a same in the form of line chart as well so this is how one can view and plan according to their uh needs and requirements and uh, coming to the serpents and gram sabha meetings these details will be coming from nic uh, uh people actually uh, through service based we we will be uh, grabbing all those details from them so uh, those uh, we are still working on it and uh, coming to census there uh, here demographic data economic wise uh, details amenities and uh, housing details are given in demographic details all this uh, uh, types of population uh, categories of populations are uh, uh, given in the form of bar, bar chart and pie chart and similarly the economic wise uh, detail activity wise details are also given and these all data are on based on uh, census uh, data so one can also see distribution of marginal workers population of 3 to 6 months of periods in the form of pie and bar charts as well so this kind of all information will be uh, can be viewed in the area profile details and in activities suggestions plans approved plans projected plans ongoing activity completed activity all these details can be viewed and these services will also be getting free and uh, the work is go on progress and uh, coming to download profile report module here in download profile report module whatever shown in area profile all the information one can download uh at there is into uh, five uh, four different chapters and also uh, there is a uh, Uh, the provision of all chapters is and click on download all the information which is given in area profile one can download in the form of pdf and uh, as you can see uh so it will be in the form of pdf and this is of problem you can view so it would be like this a uh, complete uh, list of pdf will be given like overview all the rainfall details weather details and all the administrative boundaries and maps and also the demographic details economic wise details and everything everything will be Yeah, listed out and given in the form of PDF. One can download. Now coming to the plan and activity module. Here, uh, we have basically three different types of land activities. One is community assets, water resource, and land resource development. And uh, in community assets, like schools and all uh, all types of assets can be planned. Now basically, we will. Uh, let's see community assets and also there is uh, as you can see there is a uh, has even sir said in the ppt we are also working on the dynamic uh, like uh, on based on user inputs we are working on those modules as well but as of now we have some uh, already developed plans using the sdp data database and of 54 panchayats and those with, those you can view from this module and also uh, here there is a provision for user also to intervene his uh, uh, views or his suggestions over here so let us see community assets need assessment of the same area uh, that is telangana algod monugode block and of uh, kompale so here this profile is under uh, has interior village we, which we have already seen and a population of 2004 410 and uh, it is eligible for rad um, rad rad free guidelines and now i am selecting and uh, i am giving a 500 m as per rad free guidelines it is uh, mentioned that within a 500 meters uh, from the settlements from the settlements within a 500 meters there should be a school so i'll think uh, it will be come this uh, mean that we can also switch on the school layer 
so that we can easily understand and we can plan better. So on click of compute, uh, also I'll be switching on the, yeah. One second. So on show all uh, show all settlements on map. So these are the three settlements present in that particular panchayat. Now based on has schools are not available within 500 meters for settlement one two three. Uh, we recommend the uh, as they are inadequate inadequate uh, uh, resources they have inadequate resources so, so we'll be uh, giving the show approach so the buffer created of 100 meters so within this buffer one can uh, plan a school so uh, we can also uh, we have given a drawing board feature so user can suggest a school over here so uh, so be, uh, on construction of one single school the both settlements uh, can be uh, uh, it can be useful for the both uh, uh, settlements instead of two schools such uh, such uh, type of planning can be done and on click of generate pdf one can uh, download his plan in the form of pdf actually there will be a url Maybe some because of uh, uh, network issues, it is not, but uh, there will be URL present here on click of it. The uh, plan uh, which we have planned can be downloaded. So on click of submit, your plan will be inserted to us. So this can be viewed and uh, such how one, uh, one can plan. And similarly, like... Uh, we can go for we can do the water water resources and land resources development as well now coming to the other sections such as register here one, one can register himself and come to the map here all all state boundary district boundary dog boundary and the uh, sea boundary, district boundary, road, LULC slope, drainage, all these uh, uh, details such as satellite, which satellite data is used on which resolution, on which pro projection, all these details will be given over here. One can view from this metadata section and also one can uh, give us the feedback of the portal so that we can improvise uh, accordingly. And there is a user manual also present uh, on click of the user manual, there is a PDF get downloaded and one can go through it and easily access the portal. It is a step-by-step -step process uh, clearly mentioned in the user manual. So finally, it is contact us. Uh, one can uh, contact our CGM and director. Uh, all the informations are given in the contact us fields. So this is all about the portal. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, madam, uh, for the uh, demo on the Bhuvan Panchayat. So we'll quickly take uh, three questions. The first question is like whether this portal is available for all the users or uh, only with the admin account? No, it's available for all the users. And whatever the uh, rainfall and temperature data that is available through this portal, uh, so we, what is the source for that one? Uh, actually, we have got all those from IMD. So based on those IMD details, we have encrypted into our, uh, we have just ingested into our database and we, we are showcasing in our portal. It's all IMD database. And uh, like whatever the multi-criteria analysis, uh, uh, it was shown in the PPT, whether we can do it on this portal? Yeah, I have shown in this plan and activity, right? So we can see here, as you can see, I'll be showing you the water as well. Uh, for Telangana Panchayat. Uh, for Kumpale. So here I want to uh, plan uh, according to the groundwater and I want to construct some re recharge structures. So some percolation, I can select all those check dams 
farm ponds so based on this we'll be giving some probable locations so you can uh, see this in these particular areas one can construct the farm ponds and in this red percolation uh, check dams so this kind of information is given also i'll switch on the satellite layer for you so uh, one can easily understand and uh, also they can uh, just uh, draw a so at this particular point they want to build a farm pond so they can do it and also they can calculate as gpdi set on clear on compute gpdi this process will be going on and all the rankings of this particular uh, uh, panchayat all the rankings according to the block wise sorry block wise rankings will be given of this particular district nalgonda and has the, has sir uh, shown there are like uh, yeah so this is the education uh, education facility in this here for the block uh, kompalle uh, sorry for the block mulugode it is moderately moderately developed of rank 3 so this kind of all uh, details will be given and can be analyzed using uh, this plan and activity module okay fine madam uh, thank you very much uh, for the uh, answers and also yeah. for your uh, demonstration on bhuvan panchayat uh, yeah. so i hope all the uh, participants have got a glimpse of uh, what all it is uh, and the best way to uh, understand bhuvan is to explore it uh, uh, individually so i hope uh, with whatever uh, resources you have at your end probably you can start exploring these uh, uh, features on on uh, the bhuvan geo portal to get to know more about that one and uh, probably you can try to understand from uh, uh, your requirement and uh, can communicate us if you need some additional support uh, so that is uh, it from uh, uh, day 2 of this uh, webinar Uh, dear participants uh, so once again thank you all for your uh, valuable time and uh, we'll hope to uh, see you soon uh, in our day 3 session so once again um, uh, thank you very much uh, so just to some of the queries that uh, you have posted in the uh, chat about the uh, quiz uh, quiz sessions so now all the quiz sessions will be enabled and will be available up to july 14 that is on the until th the 3rd day of the webinar so you can take your uh, i mean uh, time to uh, attempt that uh, uh, questionnaire but once you start attempting that question you need to submit that one but the link will be available for all the 3 days so kindly ensure that uh, you uh, do the uh, attempt of the quiz and also submit that one and uh, as we have already shared with you in the guidelines like uh, for uh, getting the certificate uh, you need to participate in all the quiz uh, sessions uh, you need to score minimum of 50% overall and you need to also submit the uh, webinar feedback okay so these are the points that you need to remember if you want to uh, generate a certificate in your name from this uh, webinar so kindly ensure that you follow it and uh, uh, you do it and then uh, you can we you can generate the certificate okay so with that uh, 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 briefing i think we'll uh, we'll end this session now so thank you again uh, for your uh, valuable time and uh, we we all uh, see you tomorrow for the day 3 session so thank you very much have a good day